Cheshire. Um, I don't think <laughs> I don't yes, believe they do the introduction. Well, we have audio. I don't know if they have audio. There's a big difference between us and them <laughs> having audio. Nope, I got I got the signifier over here that we do not have audio on that side. Oh, now they got audio. Well, you know what? We're not going to play that intro over again. Oh, well, we are. We? <laughs> Wait. No! I don't care. Welcome, welcome to the non sequitur Show, where, where we're still learning the technical difficulties of V-Mix, even though if we've had it for years. But, uh, yeah. Well, we... What do you mean, we? We, we, we had it before. But are you referring to the 5% learning. or the 95%? <laughs> Oh, and now Cheshire is muted. All right, let's make let's make sure that Cheshire is unmuted. Yes, I, well, that's what they say. I'm just looking at the Hello. outside. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. Anyways, I, we don't need to we don't need to do the intro again. Even nobody though I like is, the visuals and I do. Nobody yeah, needs to hear me anyway. Yeah. I don't matter. You're so tiny that your voice doesn't matter. They say. Eee! No, seriously, they can't hear you. I'm I'm actually kind of curious. So know. so can they, they only... can they hear me and can they hear um. Our other they can hear you yes. and they can hear I. Yes. The the woman they cannot I was hear, able to hear so Cheshire, I think, when I turned on my the watch page. I don't know. Maybe that was my imagination. Oh, they can now. I uh, so we have allowed the woman to speak. Good, good. I want to oh, make sure huzzah. I don't want to be accused of being sexist. Next time, Steve, <laughs> you want a whole slideshow of stuff, put it together yourself before the show <laughs> and then send it to me <laughs> instead of just sending me a bunch of crap on hangouts and being like, figure it out and leaving. <laughs> I really did do that. I'm just like, okay, here you go. This is what we're going to be talking about. Can you arrange them in some kind of order that makes sense? Sure, Steve, I'll do that for you. So, <clears throat> all right. So we we this is a professional show here. So as you can see, highly yeah. professional. So and, you guess. know what we should do? I guess we should we should yes. I think we should introduce the guests because we have some amazing guests. Uh, for those who don't know, we have the amazing Landon Kurtnoll, who is a computer scientist, mathematician, volcanologist. Uh, Physicist, dude. I mean, I don't know. I'm just going to name off stuff that he's. I mean, it's probably a shorter list of astronomer. things that he's not than what he is. Astronomer, no. uh, planetologist. What do they call him? What do people? Planetary dollars? Planetary scientist. What the hell they call him. Planetary scientist. So, so anyways, uh, so, Landon, so good to see you, my friend. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on your time zone latitude from your online astronomer. And it's really good to be here with all these other great folks, which I hope you will uh, introduce. I'm just excited to have oh, you Landon know, on non-sec. Cheshire, <laughs> you know what we forgot? We, we, we have Landon here. We could have done a DEF CON 1 science intro that I sent you that we didn't have in the intro. Why but that's you okay. send me that? <laughs> Pretend I, you I, saw I, the DEF CON science, science, science intro there. But, yeah, because I made that. That was my... <laughs> that's my He's very predictive of his 5%. Anyway. Yeah, it was my 5%. And of course, we also anyway, have... So, Mm-hmm. Introduce. Oh, that that's me. That's the Dapper Dino. It's you. I'm here because I was a nuke in the Navy. <laughs> that's that's the whole reason. Yeah. Normally I do stuff that's... like biology and paleontology and stuff, but then every once in a while I get hauled out of my my tube that I live in when in my intro to go talk about nuclear stuff. That Definitely. literally is the and, and the only reason why you're here is because you have the same training that I did on this physics stuff. So if I make mistakes, oh, you're going to make sure that I don't screw it up too bad. That's it. Like, <laughs> legit. <laughs> so. Yeah. <laughs> and, and of course, in spirit, we have bulls. So, to bulls? Absolutely yes. between us. Cheers yeah. to bulls. Wait, I'm on this side. I got I to do this over here. Yes. The, sto- the stupid four by three, Chesh. There you go. Um, so, Cheshire, <laughs> uh, would you like to introduce the topic to people, what we're going to be talking about? Or do you even know what we're doing? <laughs> I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I was given Fine. such I'll, a. I'll I was meltdowns. given such a. Fl- I'm gonna have a meltdown. <laughs> That's such yeah, a flurry it's, it's, of stuff thrown at me today. <laughs> I'm just like I don't know. I think things blew up one time, and now we're gonna talk about why. <laughs> well, you know, there's two been times. A, there's been a few reactor accidents. Yeah, I mean, but we're gonna be able to talk about two specific reactor accidents. But before we did, I mean, uh, Landon, there was another um, natural accident that's happened recently. Uh, if you wanted to talk about for a few seconds with the volcano, cause you're also a volcanologist. Not kidding, yeah. man. He's so, like everything. So, and, and I, I presume in, in sort of the, after the show I actually have some images that we can show you about the uh, Hunga Tonga eruption. Um, that's non nuclear incident, but, but if you hang around till afterwards and then join us, I guess on, on what on, on, uh, on discord, is that it? Um, yeah, we might figure out something on the after show. 
I think it should probably go on to the GDC, but. Oh, the GDC yeah, Discord. Yeah, I gotta start. I gotta stream on the GDC every so often. Um, so we probably will do that. Yeah. If we do so that. let's let, let's yeah. say it, it, for for folks not during this time after, but afterwards. Um, not only can you ask us questions about about some of the new stuff we we, we bring up, but also I'll go and talk about the, what's happening in in Hunga Tonga and, and that eruption you may have heard about, which is a non nuclear incident. So, all right. Um, then let's talk about some nuclear incident stuff after we read the, read the super chats. Uh, Darvo says for five Australian, Landon Noel has double the IQ in here. Good to see him still. See, good to see him still kicking. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's oh, a little dark, kindly. but me too. Thank you, Digital Demonic Davros. Um, yeah, Landon cannot die on us. It's just please it's no, don't happen. do that. I can't even think about yeah, that right yeah. now. Like, uh, I'm, uh, want to talk about meltdowns? Don't, don't, don't right? go there. We'll lose it. We'll <laughs> lose it. I will um, die. <laughs> Ask Scott for five pounds. As long as y'all keep using the word accident, you have nothing to fear from me. I wasn't even there. Well, we're not going to blame you, Ash Scott, for these accidents. Everything um, is Steve's fault. You know what? You, you know, there has accident. been yeah. like, a, well, there has been, there has been some natural accidents. There have been some various other accidents. We're not going to be talking about Three Mile Island, even though that was a very well known well, <clears throat> partial meltdown. There, there is a bit but, of a conspiracy theory that one of these wasn't an accident. I, and I know that conspiracy theory, and we could touch on it, but um, you know, we'll we'll, we'll touch on it when we get I there. Although I, just, I don't buy it, but into it, but I, yeah, I yeah. don't personally believe it, but I don't think it's completely impossible. Like, I don't think it's on the same level as like, oh, the Illuminati control the world. It's like, yeah, the there was some motive there. Well, at so, least maybe so, there was some lack of attent attentiveness, maybe. Yeah. So, so we we're, we're, we're focusing on on nuclear incidents of of. A couple, two of the nuclear incidents that are beyond, you know, level four, and in particular, what we're trying to do is not to talk about blame, but talk about what happened and why, right. as well as give some sense of 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 what's being done to not repeat mistakes, accidents, right. events. Yeah, and I think that's the big thing. Everyone, yeah. every time they have a kind of a reactor incident, you have um, something that's documented. Even 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 a small reactor incident is considered something to be noted, and they they use it to prevent future accidents or prevention, right, of accidents. Matter of fact, as I've told people before, um, I was on a guided missile cruiser. It was a 150 megawatt reactor. It was designed by D2G, which is destroyer second class or second generation from um, General Electric. That's what the G stands for. And uh, we actually actually went critical with the reactor department door open one time. Not, not fully, but Ooh. it was a jar. That was um, a big incident. Um, that's a big no-no because you have several people that have to go down and verify that door is shut before you go re reactor critical. That didn't seem to happen. Um, and so, yeah, yeah, wow. I've been that guy that who was, has to verify the door is closed. <clears throat> pe 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 people could have gone to jail for that, but people did get busted. I assure you. I was not, it was not my plant. There was two plants, M1 and M2. I was an M1 and up on the M2. So I not, don't blame me. I had nothing to do with it. <laughs> that's, but, blame Steve. That's significantly, <laughs> that's significantly bigger than the, the biggest incident that happened while I was uh, in, which was that at one point we had a, technically it was a primary coolant leak, but it was like a hairline fracture in a pipe that had wet some of the cladding, but it didn't matter. That was like a two week, everything's down, whole oh, yeah. teams are being flown in and like, yeah. Well, we, we had something similar before we get started on the reactors. Uh, in San Diego Harbor, we had a accidental coolant discharge to seawater, um, which wasn't very much, but it still required multiple testing for like six months in the harbor. Um, oh, yeah. Manya, New Zealand five dollar for five says, Exactly. I'm sick of people being blamed when you have issues with PEEO procedures and uh, equipment, environment, and organization. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's multiple factors that go into these things. So we're going to be talking in depth what what really was the cause of these things, whether they were more human error and or just human error and operational error and design error and many other things. Because the two reactors we're going to be talking yeah. about are SL1, which was an army reactor, and also Chen Yerbal. SL1 was a reactor yeah. that Dapper and Dino and I kind of had to learn about in nuke school. Um, one of the reasons why mm -hmm. is they wanted to explain what a reactor accident does, was, and that was one of the first reactor accidents that have actually ever happened. And it was the deadliest as far as the initial conditions, as far as the, the reactor itself, uh, yeah. three people died. In, well, two people died instantly and one died a few hours later, but it was the yeah. first time, if I'm not mistaken, uh, people had died from a reactor incidents. Yes. Uh, it, it, but I'm I not about the, the only, I believe it's also the only like, actual meltdown in u.s history with actual fatalities 
wasn't it? Yeah, because uh, three, or three maybe one was of a two. partial coolant loss, but there was no fatality. Yeah, and they, and there was, was no cash. Yeah, no fatalities. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Right. And so, so we'll this one. So, yeah. Okay. No, go ahead. I mean, please. So, so when talking about went SL one, it it was a you know submarine class uh, you know power thing is in that in that style of is run by the army um, at at the time, and um, and and. Based upon this incident, how many uh, reactors does the army run now? Uh, I, don't think, I don't think they're a ban forever from ever having any reactors, if I'm not mistaken. Zero, yeah. The, yeah, I would this, say zero. This has oh. been cited by numerous people as the reason why the United States Army does not run reactors. Yeah. Oh. They didn't and have the numerous training people, I mean, like, that we had. Generals. Yeah. And, and I, I, I will, I'll say, because, you know, the St Stephen Napper are biased, um, what I saw from the the Navy people and my experience um, on on a on nuclear sub was was extraordinary high level professionalism, and in fact, um, in in the commercial or research reactor that I had access to, um, you know, people that from the Navy were highly prized as 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 being you know competent in in the actor operation design and and and, and also with safety, right? They, we had uh, the, the reactor, the reactor we had, had some remarkable safety people who had been through the experience uh, through, through the Navy New School. Um, and I'm sure as well, you know, not only do you, 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 you do not, you, you learn about reactor operation, but you also learn a lot about reactor safety. Yeah, and you're trained and you're retrained and you're constantly requalifying. And it's kind of funny because, um, you know, the machinist mate, uh, is, is the grunt of the nukes. Um, but, but the people think that that is like the lowest of the three. And I beg to differ. You know, what's, it's so funny because if you actually understood reactor theory, you would, you would understand that reactor operation from the power level is actually caused by steam demand. And who controls the steam man demand? That would be the machinist mates. The reactor operator, as far as the person who actually shims the rods, has very little control over reactor power uh, after the point of adding heat. So when we're talking about safety conditions, it is so much on the machinist mate that's out there in the in the reactor room with the system because if they, if they do something wrong where they have a high steam demand well, you're going to have a bad day i imagine that some that's things what it goes around, might get like really power. really technical and some things come down to just mismanagement like we didn't yes. have somebody where they were supposed to be and it wasn't the person no. who wasn't theirs fault it was the person above them who <clears> said no you need to be over here or you should be over here why are you over here and you get mismanagement and things like that that, and that, that's kind of what happened yes. in, in, in Chernobyl a little bit. Um, SL1 is a little bit different. Um, so this, this Middle kind of like management? So, so, yeah, so but SL1 that's the thing. That, that, that the, like, human, the, the human factors are something that you have to design into a, 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 a reactor system that humans are going to be running it and doing doing things. Now, the one thing that I saw that was, didn't qualify as an incident, but it was a case when you know, uh, your chest was saying about middle management. Um, you know, it was one of the, um, you know, one of the officers reporting up to the captain. Um, one of the people I referred to is that people who went around and screamed a lot, right? Didn't accomplish anything, but they screamed a lot. And the scream a lot person ordered, yes, yeah, jails. ordered jails. a, um, uh, a, a, a someone involved in, in, in the reactor part, I won't say what, to do something. And that person declined. And, and, and in fact, what happened was later on, it, it turned out that, that at that point, when, when the person, you know, said, you know, the, what was, was incredulous, this, 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 as you say, grunt, um, but one knew what was going on, declined the order. Um, it happened to be the captain walked in. And, and at that point, the captain asked the person, you know, um, you know, have, have you can, you know, the reason for um, disobeying the order, and the person gave a a very succinct but logical response, and and the and the captain said, "You are correct," um, and he countermanded the junior officer's order and, and moved forward. Um, he later on forced the junior officer to give a a commendation to the list guy for being correct. He actually, forced hey, Landon, him guess to who, do guess who guess who guess who guess who trains the junior officers. <laughs> yeah, we well, did. it turned fact, out. I, I, it turned out this is a person who was assigned to him by another captain as a as a 
as a um, at an FU. There was another captain that didn't like this captain, and and <laughs> reigns a transfer of of a, of a clown. I, uh, I I've only just made really one direct order, and it was a very similar experience. Um, I had a junior officer that uh, we were in a very specific lineup where we were cross uh, steamed where we had one reactor power on the other side. So it was cross steam from one plant to the other. When you're operating in certain conditions like that, you have very specific temperature and pressure parameters. They're not to be violated. I mean, only time they can be violated is in severely in an emergency situation, which would be considered war. Well, they had order a certain uh, amount of power uh, distribution where the alignment of the plant wasn't suitable at the time for that pressure and temperature. And, but we were doing, you know, ops with other ships and they're like, oh, well, the captain wants this. And I try to explain to the junior officer where here's the SOP, here's the manual, here's the, here's the big book of God that says we cannot do this. And, uh, he's like, well, but the captain wants it. I'm like, okay, but I'm the interim supervisor. And I'm like, I'm not going to do this. Um, he relieved me uh, about two hours later. I got to talk to the uh, chief engineer called the Chang and the Chang asked me, well, so what happened? I explained to him. He's like, yeah, you're right. That's the only thing I've heard of it. Nothing else happened after yeah. that. Don't know what happened to the yeah. jail. And so, said a word and, about and it. we'll All see the in the case. Was, okay, you're right. Yeah. And we'll see in Chernobyl that didn't happen, right? We had people doing something. So, so um, one thing that I guess people should, should kind of understand about reactors is there are things that are in, there are things that are non instantaneous, they're delayed, right? Imagine you're trying to drive a truck and you have to anticipate making turns long before this the road starts curving that's a good that's a good that's analogy essentially matter of fact i like that analogy because yeah because we're gonna be talking about a little bit reactor physics and that's exactly kind of what happens when we're talking about decays per minute for like um power transients that you have a little bit of time when you have special things called delayed neutron precursors that we're gonna get into and without those things you're going down imagine going down a windy road at 120 miles an hour where you have like milliseconds to correct where you just can't as opposed to maybe 10 minutes to, to change things. So I mean, kind there's of a huge like factor to be had. What you, when you have to have a little bit of foresight and make a decision ahead of time, it's like, yeah, I'm turning yeah. the wheel now, but the wheel's not going to go into effect until 10 minutes down the road. Sure. But there's also mm -hmm. something- That's exactly what happens. There's also something to be said for like, this is a lot of complicated mathematics. This is a lot of complicated chemistry. And when you have major accidents, it's what makes people afraid of things like nuclear energy in a way that's that's the same thing happened with the zeppelin like people didn't want it no. because it caused so much damage did and it was terrifying when it happened even though if you look at the actual death rate of it it was not nearly as high as it could have been or nearly as high as some yeah. other means of transport very good yeah, point so hard. so yeah. one of the things in particular you got to see is that 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 systems like this have um, operational, you know, procedures and parameters. And when you get, when you approach the outside edge of your operational envelope, that's when you need to take, uh, you know, uh, measures in hand, right? And so, an example of that of that truck with a windy road is, is, is if you, you anticipate there's a windy road up ahead, and you may have difficulty in steering in advance perhaps not driving at 120 kilometers an hour is the right thing to do is to slow down, right? Um, yep. Even though you might, your boss may give you pressure saying, you got to get to the guy get to the stop on time, got to stop on time, right? That's where someone who's got the training says, no, we can't do this, or we're, we, we, we bump up against a, an event and, 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 and you, you need to take, um, you know, a, a, a more, cautious attitude towards things that's essentially the part of the i think the lesson we'll learn so so um so one thing in particular again you should you know folks should understand again is that nuclear reactors have things that can happen nearly instantaneously other things that can happen where the delay is hours uh let me uh, let me read these uh, super chats real quick and then we're going to dive into the sl1 accident um <clears throat> so kawasa says 5001 what do you guys think about the sooner or later accidents will happen and nuke accidents are too devastating to risk that chance arguments. Um, I think that the likelihood of nuclear accidents, as far as the pressurized water systems that the, the United States uses inherently stable. I think the chances are very, very, very low. They're designed to with, with, be able to handle some kind of reaction accident. You're, you'll see that our, our designs 
One are inherently stable, plus they have a containment vessel that Chernobyl didn't have, which for some stupid reason was just safety. They decided to have uh, cost, um, cost, uh, they were, there was more, hey, we don't want to spend the money for this, rather than, hey, if something does happen, we don't want to, you know, we don't care. You're talking about cost, co- and so, cost reduction. Cost cutting, yeah, it, cost yeah. reduction. So cool. all the, the reactors we have, have are designed to have, with able to withstand uh, some kind of loss of coolant accident or reactivity addition accident because the if it does lose containment, it's going to be in a containment vessel. Chen Yibble didn't have that. Yeah, so so we'll we'll look at the, there, 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 there's two slides at the very end that also will address the the super chats. Uh, yeah, and so let's move yeah, forward on have, on the first. Well, I have one, I, one, one last quick thing to say. Sure. Which is yep. to say, um, look, you can look at the statistics in terms of number of people injured or killed per megawatt hour produced for all forms of major energy production. And nuclear is less than solar and wind. Oh, it absolutely. Is, it's very, if very the very entire low. world were powered yeah. by yeah. solar, but by solar, we would have more deaths than if the entire world, world were powered by nuclear. Yeah. It is the safest and, well, and, and least polluting energy exactly. source available to humans. I mean, the fact that these things are so well documented is part of the safety culture in, in reaction, reactor stuff. Similar thing like with airplanes, right? When you have a when you have a, 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 a fatality in an airplane crash, there is a whole review board and processes and then people going through pilot training just learn as Boeing. from those mistakes, right? Right. And, and learn Not, from those yep. mistakes and there's, there's serious consequences. Imagine if if Tesla and Elon Musk were held accountable for some of the things that Tesla drive cars were doing to the level they, well, I don't, of they, an airplane. Or they a might actually reactor. be. I mean, they, they kind of should be because I think a lot of these cars are in beta testing. That's a different story altogether. Mania from yeah. $5 New Zealand says, exemplary gratia, uh, when bulk items are transported, such as blades of wind turbines to be moved to remote locations like top of mountains. Um, well, I'd rather move a wind turbine than a reactor spent reactor rod. Uh, but uh, yeah. So I, let's kind of dive into this. So, so okay, so yeah, the, sure. the yeah. S1 reactor was a very small reactor. It's actually a very, very low power reactor. Now, comparison, like I said, the reactor core that I had to learn was 150 megawatts. Comparative, this was only a three megawatt reactor. That was a design reactor core um, uh, overall. Now, that th- there's a different set between the what is designed and what it actually efficiently operates at. This was much lower. It was only a couple hundred kilowatts that it was actually for, because was a, this was a more of a testing reactor. It wasn't designed to power anything of significance. This was a test facility. And people talk about right. the power. Are you you're, you're referring to the to, to the power production or are you referring to the, the the thermal energy in the core? The the amount of power production was rated at three megawatts, but the actual thermal energy was only about two hundred kilowatts. Yeah. So it's much less than the actual design. So so the way this this reactor accident kind of happened was um, they were gonna start they're gonna try to start up again this particular reactor. And the way the cores were laid out is that they had a very specific layout where you had certain cores that were acting as uh, basically what's called dummy cores. And then you had some essential rods and they had to be connected to what's called the control rod drive mechanism. Now, the way the control rod drive mechanism worked on these is a little bit different from what I'm used to. So I'm going to maybe see if, if Landon can maybe explain it better. But the control rod drive mechanism on my plant was very simple. It basically was, was basically a three things that came down and you had a screw hooked onto the control rod. So the screw came up like this. And when these things latched down on the screw, when this, this turned, it turned the threads of the screw causing the control rod to go up. Okay. So it was a- Think of like a, thing of like a wine cork extractor. When you turn yeah, the wine cork- Yeah, it was like cork, this. And, the, the cork comes and then, up. So with this turn, the screw, the screw would pull up. And so when you had a scram, these things were held on by electromagnetics. And so when these things opened up, it dropped the screw and you and the, and the the reactor would shut down because you have the control rods being slammed, usually under either gravity or we had springs yeah. that would would put, you, would put the reactor both the also, control rod also, back to the reactor. Now, also, the point of view is is if you've got a, you've got a loss of control, the default thing of everything shuts down and dies is is the the clamps come and loose and the thing falls by gravity, right? It, right. It, if you lose designed, power, what happens? It, yeah. If you lose power, then, the then, then they're basically are open. The, open up right because because they're, they're, they're gonna you're gonna you pull, pull pull back because of the magnetic forces and and the thing will thing will drop um but also weird why they do that corkscrew is so you want to be able to have fine control because control rods are not something you're supposed to go and yank out you know willy know it right they're, 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 yeah you're they, supposed to be able to control them by the they go by, in. By, by centimeters or less yeah I, I and, mean, and understand you see if you look in that look in that picture there um where there's only a, I, I think i think i'm there, there's only like wasn't there like only you know, five control rods in this whole thing? 
Yes, only five. Yeah, those are and five the center one. Offer. Yes, the center one was, the was one. by by far the most important one. It it's being yeah. all the way in to the reactor could keep the reactor shut down even with all the yeah. other react all the other control rods completely out and vice versa. If it were all the way out, then even if all the other control rods were all the way in, the reactor would get criti- would gain criticality at some yeah. point. Now that was a design feature, right? They, so that was to make sure that even if you had all the other control rods at maximum height, the single control rod in the middle would be the dominating one to make sure that reactor was not um, super critical. Okay. Yeah. Well, the so, inverse is usually not part of reactor design, though. Normally, most reactors but, are designed so that no one control rod can create can correct and get then, the and reactor fact, critical on its own. Dapper, that that's an important point. Um, yeah, that, that, that would that make said. sense. That, it's, that, just, that, it's, like that, things... it's like if you had it's like if you had a camshaft in your car, and if one camshaft was thrown, your whole car exploded. <laughs> yeah. So, so one of the things that that, that came out of this SL one incident was the principle that you cannot, you do not want to have one control rod being the the your your your, your safety factor. You you and so right. um, designs after SL one learning from this. Was, was one of the things that they did was say, don't have one control rod being the ultra critical one. Um, the second thing, of course, and, and, and it, 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 today it, it's, just, it's just mind boggling, is that this reactor had a known problem of control rods getting kind of stuck. And, mm-hmm. and the way that the army um, approached it was to get people out there and, and, and manhandle the control rod. That sounds right? to Grab me the whole thing and- if- People are making the argument to say, hey, we shouldn't use nuclear power because of the risk of the army fucking it up because they're the ones who have fucked it up in the past. Well, why do we have an army then if they're the ones fucking it up? <laughs> well, I mean, well, and then that, that's a, that, that goes, goes, that goes to, power. right? you know, you know, the, the, you know the, the, in terms of the court martial that should have been towards the, I think, I think the, the officer core that managed this, um, should have said we are having problems with control rods getting stuck and 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 they knew that this is a reactor where you had one critical control rod which was one of the ones that would get stuck that alone should have said we're not operating this reactor we're going to shut this thing down it is it is is un you know un, untenable um uh, in, in its operation and i think i think what should have happened because there's a lot of a lot of review boards talked about the the three guys and their you know various things of when they got along together and so forth. No, I would have I would have I would have um, court martialed and reduced the lowest rank and and discharged with, with dishonorable discharge the the officers that were in charge of allowing this reactor to get in that situation. Because again, part of this incident occurred was from that you know that, that they were trying to bring this this reactor up. Rods were getting stuck, and and the guys were in on top of the reactor, and had one person trying to basically pull it out, right? And imagine well, well, you got this, this, it, this, this. Let's kind of dive that, into that. That's, that's part of the problem. Yeah, is maybe, that that should have been an operational was, situation saying this re- we can't operate this reactor in this thing. We all know how right. difficult it, it can be sometimes to pull out when things are going critical. Right, <laughs> yeah, and so I had opportune. So, well, let's let's kind of let's kind of dial it back for some people so they understand what a control rod actually does, because I think it's possible. I mean, they really need to know what a control rod does and understand what happened in this particular accident. Okay, so what it basically yeah, by what the way, a that, 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 does, that 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 centrical building there is is where the reactor was. Um, yes. So, what a control rod basically does it, it 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 helps control the amount of fuel exposure to neutron flux. Okay, Use what does that rods mean? Are doped with, you yeah, have, you, you have you a certain amount of enough. All right, so let me go back and further. So yeah, inside the reactor core, do you want, Jab, you want to explain reactor flux densities? Oh, oh, okay, so. Give it a shot. Yeah, go for it. What is a reactor, basically? <clears throat> a reactor is a bunch of uranium, 235, which when it breaks apart in a reaction called fission, it's a nuclear reaction, it sends off neutrons. Oh. What will it be important yeah. later is it sends out some neutrons immediately called prompt neutrons. Then the fission products themselves send off more neutrons later called delayed neutrons. That'll be important later. But right now what we need to know Very. is that these neutrons, <clears throat> they can be slowed down by certain substances. And once they reach certain energy levels that are lower than initial, they have a good chance of 
hitting another uranium atom and causing it to split. And then those neutrons go yep. on and on. Now we call and, a reactor. This is an critical. important point that if your reactor, if your neutron's too fast, it zips by and doesn't react, right? It has almost no chance of reacting unless it that you that you really dead on target, right? You, you need right. to have and slowing those down. slow down the neutrons. Yeah, um, and that's called moderation. In order for them to do something. Yes. So if I understand, that's why they call moderate. So if I understand what you're describing to me is you've got things that are firing off other things and those go in a chain. And if they slow down too much, they're going to cause problems. But you do need to slow some of them down. So that way they actually react with this other thing over here down the down the yeah, chain line. You, you, want, you want to have a certain amount. Yeah, of so yeah, you want to have a certain amount of thermalized neutrons because your aim to the five likes to absorb and go fit cause fission, right. which I told you energy. it was complicated chemistry. So there's. <laughs> So there's three things that these and neutrons physics. can do ultimately. One is yes. they can go on to cause more fission. Another thing is yeah. they can simply escape the reactor vessel and do nothing. And the last thing is they can be absorbed by something in the core. Now, there are things in the core that are actually designed to absorb neutrons for the purpose of changing how often these neutrons actually cause subsequent fission. So when on average each neutron or each fission event causes on average one other fission event, we call that critical. And the reactor at that point is sustaining a stable amount of power. It just rolls along at the same power level. Right. Mm -hmm. That's good. On average, if each fission event causes less than one new fission event, we're subcritical. And if that sustains itself, the reactor is on its way to shutting down. And if it's yeah. more than one, one on average, we're, it's called supercritical and so power is increasing. Would it be better to say yeah. it's maybe like a seesaw? where you want to keep all of the weight in the middle, but, but the weight is well, the energy that you have. It, so the energy depends of... on what's happening. So yeah, because it's like an airplane, right? Power, it need to airplane need to take off the ground. It needs to be up, needs to be down. You need to, to fly down. up altitude, and then sometimes you need to come back down on the ground, right? But you're doing it in a sustained, controlled manner. So, oh, okay. Yeah, right. So you're not just transit. dropping. You're, dropping. A, you're not you, like... You want to have a transit... You want to have a transit condition, right? So when you, when you want... You're increasing reactor power because of steam demand, then you're going to have a, a super criticality and either your K effective, which is your amount of life cycles, the amount of neutrons in the core that have not leaked out, which is called the thermal non leakage factor, or comparative to what has been absorbed by something other than the fuel, which is the non fuel uh, utilization factor, like, like the uh, control rods or the cadmium or whatever's in the core that's going to absorb that neutron. That's not the fuel. There's a factor that goes into all this stuff. So all this math goes right. into the, the equation that says, okay, how many neutrons do we start in one generation? as opposed to the next generation. If there's more neutrons being produced in the next generation, we call that supercritical. And we want that for a transient condition, but we want that to level out and eventually have steady state conditions where it's critical, where there's no increase of neutrons, there's no decrease so, of neutrons. So, so we use the so right line to, 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 to do a little bit plane, to do that. Going along with the plane analogy, sometimes you yeah. need more thrust and sometimes yes. you want to get off less the runway, to get off the runway uh, and you, but you have a controlled amount of thrust. You don't just blow it out your ass. Right. Yes. Yeah. 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 Now, yeah. Exactly. Now thrust, I is yeah, thrust. <laughs> thrust is life. And, size, and you know, and, and also chess. Yeah, sure. On that thing of an airplane is that that you know if you had an airplane mm -hmm. where the the flaps are not working well, they're kind of wobbly and wiggly, and, and the joystick didn't really move it quite well. to kind of wiggle around. It's you sit there and say that plane has problems. Let's not fly that plane. Right. Right. If you right? yeah, let's keep but, it on the ground. Like Boeing. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes. So, so, so in the case of a reactor, right, when you're starting it off, you don't have reactions. You got to get, you got to get that, that, that thing taking off, but not to the point where it, it goes, Too far it goes and then stalls. Up. Right. Yeah. yeah. And then bad things happen. Right. So, so, right? so, so, so now we can say what control they... rods are. All right. Yeah. And let's, 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 let's say what happens. Rods. So, let's, but with a control yeah. rod. So, a control rod. It contains what's called a poison, and that's something that's really good at absorbing neutrons, but not re-emitting them. So as you lower control rods into the reactor, a higher and higher portion of the neutrons that are zipping around are simply absorbed and don't go on to cause fission. Now, usually in most current reactors, you use this primarily for doing two, three things. Shutting down by lowering them all the way, starting up by bringing the control rods up enough so that you can actually have the reactor reach criticality, or third, mm -hmm. you can they can be adjusted inside the reactor at sort of a middling level in order to help control the temperature. Help trim, so, right? Right. So if the control yeah, rods right. are all the way in, 
ideally you're absorbing so many neutrons that there's essentially no induced fission. If the control rods are all the way up, well, they almost never are, and you're at maximum, um, you know, neutron uh, flux. Amplification. Flux is just yeah. how many. Flux is just how many of a particular kind of particle pass through a given area in a certain unit of time. So you can so talk about to photon like flux, you're... which is just how many photons go through this square meter. Or so something. your control rod is basically how many you have active is going to directly mm -hmm. affect how much you're thrusting. And it, it, it's, it's uh, part of, it's part of basically the, 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 the fuel mixture, right? Think again, it's, uh, your, 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 your throttle and fuel mixture adjustment okay. is, is, is there. And, and so it's one of those things where, where on, on a system it's operating, the nuance of controlling how much you, you're you getting. You don't sit there and just consume. radically go flip, 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 flip back and forth. Um, cause, because the system is not instantaneous in its response. And that's a big yeah, thing a, that, that a, is there. Is there's a delay that happens there. But it, but it yeah, should be noted that we're talking about... Usually involve lots of weight. Yeah, we're, we're, yeah we're, we're, it should be known we're talking about a very specific type of reactor. It's called a pressurized water reactor. You know, there are other types of reactors out there. There's boiling water reactors. There's graphite cooled. There's a whole bunch of it. But the, the type of system that we're talking about with the SL1 was a pressurized water reactor where Dapper had explained that the control rod really only contains the moderated temperature. That's what the control rod actually does. If you want to raise the temperature of the coefficient... coefficient um, of the of the thermal effects for the for the tea hot tea cold loop. You want to make it the reactor, warmer or colder. Yeah, if you want to raise the yeah. temperature average and, between the water going in and the water going out, that's what you have the control right on about for. But the actual and, and one of the reactor that, power is controlled by how much steam is being pulled out. Sure, that's the thing. And this this reactor was a was essentially a a, a, a sort of research reactor for the the, the army to design with the idea that they might bring small reactors. Um, into fields of operation, crazy as it sound, like, sounds like. And so mm -hmm. one of the things that happens with a reactor is that the people wanting power might say, you know, we want more power. Captain says, mm -hmm. give me more power. And, and Scotty says, you know, she can't take it, right? It, 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 you, 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 what you want anymore, and what you can get are and, not necessarily the same thing. Yeah. And you don't do that by raising rod height. The rod height does not have any effect right. on reactor power out of point, after point of well, adding so heat. But <clears throat> maybe we should talk about the lead up to this, to the SL1. Yeah. So like, you know, I, we start out, we, we've okay. been having rod problems, rod control problems. Yes. And we're shut down sticking. for a, they, they've been sticking a lot. And now we're shut down for a, like a, a Christmas New Year break. Right. Yeah. And, and so imagine again, yeah, well, the, the, well, and, 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 and that, they, that they're using the truck analogy is that sometimes your accelerator pedal sticks and you have to reach down there and yank it back. <clears throat> And, 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 and it should be also forward. noted, though, Dabber, going during, during one of the shutdowns, because this, this was a very older reactor, the control rods on the dummy control rods had, were boron coated. And over time, that boron coating had just been used up. Yeah. So what they tried to do to make up for that was they put these cambium shims in there. The cambium shims don't work as well as the boron as far as neutron absorption, which gave the number nine middle core even a much higher effect on the reactor that it was normally designed for, which they Sounds didn't Sounds to account. me that you're yeah. trying to put on used brake pads instead of new brake pads. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, yes. That's a really, see, yeah. I, love her, I love her automobile. They actually work. Yeah, uh, yeah it's exactly. Yeah. Because yeah. They're, they're, they're because these, these dummy reactor uh, control rods were there to control the reactor flux, so you didn't have a runaway effect from a single core. When you lower that by because of the boron being, being used away and you just put some shimming on there, that didn't have it gave the middle core a even higher degree of amount of reactivity that could be added to the core which is um it's not really a you measurable don't amount not reactivity is basically be putting how used brake pads on your car when you have an accelerator that is yeah. getting stuck <laughs> yes stuck one way or another yeah. and so normally you see the our reactor operators are inside a console area that is 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 having the uh, having various various adjustments going and and this is equivalent to as a truck driver, occasionally your accelerator pedal gets stuck. Your throttle gets stuck. You have to reach down and yank on it and try to kind of, and, and not only that, you have, because it gets stuck, you have to kind of push it, you know, bring it back and forth to get to free it up, to, to, to pull it to the right spot, right? And you're driving on That's black ice, happening. so you're not going to well, be stopping and, or going and, right away. <laughs> to wait till and Chesh, this, is, yes. this is, ex but this is exactly what they had to do in the control rods. This, this was just not sounds like a, that, why don't you just get a new car? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, somebody, somebody, that's a good say, so, so, 
with, when they went to go try to start this up, the, one of the things they had to do was that middle core rod. They needed to latch it to that control rod mechanism. In order to do that, it was a very specific procedure, and they only needed to raise it. They literally pull it up like this by about a couple inches, four, four inches. Okay, so just a little bit. Yeah, four. You, you, there's a little procedure to put it on there, and then down the control rod drive mechanism can make it go up and down, right? That That's what was supposed to have happened, okay? But they as put up they just explained, a little bit. As they explained, mm -hmm. that control rod was known to be stuck. So what happens when you are pulling on something and it's known to be stuck? What does the average person tend to do? You pull, pull harder, harder, right? So what yes. happens, you think, Chester, and, and you're not a physicist. I mean, you're not you're like a nuclear person. But what do you think happens when you have a control rod that's designed to keep a neutron it, flux in, is it in control? that, that you I have, have no idea what we're right, talking about? So, so in, instead of pulling up about four inches... There's, by the way, three people in this in this scenario that happened here. There's one person pulling the control rod, one person standing next to him, and then a person on the on the upper level, kind of observing. When he went to go pull this middle rod four inches to put it on the control on drive mechanism, he actually pulled it about twenty inches. Yeah, that yeah. sounds about right. Massively amount of reactivity was added to the core in milliseconds. In it's milliseconds, like one of that those, reactor... It's like one of those cartoons where somebody's <clears> pulling <throat> on the. There's like a thing stuck on your face and you're trying to pull it off and yes. you end up like just pulling yourself completely into a somersault. So, right. Yes. And now yes. this is where that, that difference that I mentioned between prompt and delayed neutrons comes into, um, th this is where it begins to matter because normally yes. reactors are designed to go critical based on delayed neutron interactions. However, if you can be, if you reach criticality based on just the prompt uh, neutrons, it becomes much, much harder to control what's going on. And generally it results in much higher power outputs because at this point, a huge portion You're of the exponential curve. That, are, that are being emitted. Right. And so when a reactor goes prompt critical, it's a bad time. In this and, case- And you can't yeah. just put it right it down. Flashed. The damage is already done. Right. Yeah, because okay. cause, cause, cause understand, yes, understand yes. Josh, that, that, that typically it, the, the time it takes for a neutron to be absorbed by a fissionable nuclei and split is around 10 nanoseconds, right? And if you have too many things going on, you get an exponential rise and stuff. Now he mentioned that those are the prompt ones. Remember we remember we said when 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 the fission product breaks up, you get various pieces. Those pieces also will send off uh, 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 neutrons as well. Those are delayed neutrons, right? And They're so not all necessarily um, you have, you have the prompt right. stuff, which is happening right now, and you have the, the, the array of the decay products that are going to send off neutrons a little bit later. That's the difference between yep. this. Which are so also that's one of the reasons why we've done the analogy about the, the truck right. having to look far down the road because of the delayed stuff. So, so you're looking in here, this is an example of, of you're seeing a, a U-235, one, one of the primary things in reactors that can split. Um, and, and it has certain percentage of, of stuff that it might might produce, right? And these are three examples of, of decay products. But but in particular, one of the things that happens, if you look at this U-35, depending on how it, it goes through, whether it goes through um, the, the thing that says TE or the I or the XE, right? XE is a xenon. Um, the, the, the xenon 135 is a very important um, um, uh, isotope oh, yes. that is yeah. found in reactors because xenon 135 is a really super super neutron sucker, right? It it really it it grabs neutrons like there's no tomorrow, right? So that XE 135 there, the one that's under the point two, um, there you see, for example, if you go into those things, you get 0.19 seconds, and then 6.6 .6 hours, right? So you have a you have a three percent load where after a certain number of hours you'll get a, a xenon. Xenon will begin to build up. Um, remember, one of the things that happens is that that if this reactor has been operating before, there are these decay, decay products inside the reactor. They're decaying. They're producing the point where you're getting this this, this xenon 135, um, but they're also able to send send off neutrons. It's Those like a cycle. The delayed that's, neutrons needs to go through a hole, and so they yeah lose whatever they need but if you try to jam too many through at a time or there's if there's a backup it's going to end up split yeah because so, you have all these prompt think, neutrons right and all these prompt neutrons are going to go on to cause fissions and you don't want that you want much more of a slowed reaction that's why you have to wait for these delayed neutron precursors that are generally at lower energy levels 
Um, you enter the five tens are like two, about two mega electron volts, give or take. For that, the, so when you have these different energy levels, most of them have to be thermalized. In other words, they have to be slowed down so it acts as a better target area for that nucleus called a barn ratio. And these late neutron precursors are at different energy levels, which need to eventually slow down. So it overall slows down the amount of time rate of change of the reactor, making it inherently more stable. Matter of fact, the reactor would not work if it wasn't this, for this very property of delayed neutron precursors. Yeah, um, so, so, so we're seeing here that as a talk about the target size of 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 the of the let's say they call it in terms of barns. And and you've got some neutron coming in. Um, you do have a small percentage that just hits the thing dead on, right? But that's a relatively small set compared with the one that can be can be captured, um, like that the, the can produce efficient, right? Um, but but that's a that's a, that large target area is a problem because if that neutron is doing too fast, it'll zip through and, and not not be absorbed. So that's one of the reasons why the neutrons have to be slowed down by a moderator to be effective. That being yep. said, remember that there are two sources of neutrons. There's the atom up the chain that just split, um, but more often it's it's the it's the daughter products from the split that will remember you remember to talk about in that diagram we had like six hours on our half life that 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 will send off neutrons that are that are delayed and, and this and is the reason why what you want the, the rods are controlling the rods it's can help, control it's, it's helping helping they're 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 gonna they're gonna take away neutrons right because you know if you just merely had a purely exponential expansion of of neutron absorption that's what you have a nuclear bomb reactors aren't bombs yeah. Reactors are cases where you have a power and a little bit of throttle to have it go up and down slowly, um, but but keep it moderated. And so the moderators slow down the neutrons, control rods will s absorb neutrons depending on how far they're into the reactor or not. Okay, so this is this is a reaction that's going on producing the energy that you're drawing from and utilizing. The yeah. rods... This is going to happen one way or another. The rods are there to control how much and at what rate different ones are going through to make sure that you yes. are as efficient as possible yeah. and nothing goes wrong. And so what's happening yeah. is, is these rods are either somebody moved one too much and put way too many in all at once and over basically yes. overflowed the system and lost control because they instead of like going into a gradual climb, it just shot straight upwards. Yeah, yeah. And so this had way, it, had it, case, the control rods actually do more than that too. They also you make sure that the fuel burn is even, right? You don't want a certain amount of fuel being burned in a particular part of the core and not in another part of the core. So you want that. You want you want to make sure you when you look at the neutron density, nice, where, even, where, right? Where, where, right? You want it to be more of a much more even, so you have a control burn, so you don't have to like raise this rod height way the hell over here and this one keep down here. You want to be able to raise them all kind of evenly, so you have a nice even burn. So the control rods help to distribute the amount of fuel that's being exposed to the Keeping neutron flux. Keeping all of um, these pieces even and controlled, rather than correct, yes. correct, arbitrary. Yes, correct. Uh, killer. When, when, what's that? Killer says 80, uh, 85, 49 says five Australian. Oh, Steve, please, please, please talk about the media is living and how radiation works and how unlivable and dangerous for millions of years. You know, we'll we'll have a special episode on maybe uh, we'll get uh, Dapper Fallout. and uh, Lana back on for. For uh, for talking about different types of radiation, where you know we're talking about uh, REMs yeah. and and beta radiation as opposed to neutron yeah. radiation, we can biological do biological damage. Not, not now. Rays. Yeah. No, we're not going to talk can do about a, biological a later thing to talk now, about. But, but I, like, I'd love I, to. Do I that. can talk about yeah. like you know effects of nuclear nuclear blasts and 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 radiation and stuff like yeah. that. We can do that as a as a you know down the road. So, yeah. so in so, in you, SL one, I think but, it's important to realize that. When this control rod was yanked out some five or six times more than it was supposed to be, what ended up happening is in the span of about four milliseconds, it went from yes. basically being shut down to being prompt critical and going a few orders of magnitude over its rated power generation. Th and three megawatts to 20 flashed. gigawatts. Yeah. 20 yeah, gigawatts to four milliseconds. Flash to steam. Yeah, so and it exploded. A man was impaled to the ceiling. We're gonna get there. We're gonna get there. No spoilers. One yeah. point so, 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 twenty-one gigawatts. gigawatts. That's enough no, to time so, travel. So, so it, it went from again. Let's 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 let's, let's not drop some of those numbers. It went from three megawatts normal of the power to twenty gigawatts. To yes, twenty gigawatts. Right. That 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 is a 
That is Megan, an expansion Megan. of 6,662 6, times. So, so imagine so, you've got this truck and, and because the, the person's trying to yank on the throttle and can't get it there and it floors, the truck accelerates by a factor of 6,666 times. Yeah. So think about this, Chesh. That's what happens. You have, right? Now, the, now, now, now that part of the thing as well is that, 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 right. that, that, that normally reactors aren't that in that hair triggered situation. Um, the reason why they had this uh, problem is that they went what's called prompt critical, meaning that, that, that those, those, those immediate neutrons that were being kicked out from the splits were, were, were amplifying very, very fast. What you want, and, and, and you know, sane reactor works on trying to, 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 to throttle on prompt criticality. You want to have your yeah. prompt neutrons be you can't. You, no, less you can't. than necessary. It's too, it's too fast. It's kind of like yeah. when you so, take and, and, and that the only thing that that remember, Chess, the other thing is that you have neutrons that that, that take hours before they come out. It's like and so taking you want... a, a, a a jar and taking it out of your fridge and then straining your hot oil into it. It's gonna yes. explode. It's gonna explode yes. because you, you, just you, went, you, you just went from very low <laughs> to very high. Yeah. So, so Chester, what do you think happens when you have all those prompt neutrons that are normally, again, some of them are, you're going to be more relying on the delayed neutron precursors that take a significant mm -hmm. amount of time from your life for your life cycle. But now you have all these prompt neutrons that are just going and hitting uranium and all of them are causing fission now. They're not being know, absorbed by the moderator as much. I'm starting to feel really attacked by all these questions. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. The one that's I'm kidding. To the, uh, the a, audience. To, to me, it sounds like anytime you are trying to slow pour something and then you jank your hand and a bunch yes. all comes out at once and you've ruined whatever it is thing. that you're making and it yeah. splashes yes, yeah. everywhere and your kitchen's a mess. That didn't but, just happen but, but to me recently. Just... I don't know what you're talking about. Chess, so, 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 so you're, you're right on, on, on your on notion of the, the throttle thing. But remember that what you want to do for a stable reactor design, a rational reactor design, is you'd like your, your prompt neutrons to only give you partial power, right? right? And then if you only had prompt neutrons, you're not going to go anywhere. It's going to slow down and coast. Right? You want a reactor by default, if you don't do anything, for it to just go down slow and coast. Slow grind and Yes. Stop. Right. It's, it's and and, the re and but remember that the reactor is going to operate as a sustained thing. So it's those delayed neutrons that are the thing that give you that that extra boost to bring you up to a power of one. That is that for every neutron gets gets sent out, another neutron gets 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 absorbed. Or you basically have a continued burn, even throughout the core. Just like you have a fire in a fire pit, and you don't want to have it on one side. You want to have it nice, even burn throughout the, the difference the between slamming on the gas on your car and slowly accelerating all right yeah. so let's so so, yeah. all of, so all of a sudden you throw all this gas in that right all these prompt neutrons are going to be the gas so you throw all this amount of energy very quickly um, sounds smelly that water that water in there right gets superheated very quickly it flashes over it, okay it literally vaporizes and flashes over well steam takes up a lot more volume than water than, than water in liquid form yes and so that has Absolutely. to go somewhere right so what's going to happen when you have a pressure vessel of some kind you have something under pressure where you have water that's normally in liquid form instantly flashing over and vaporizing into steam it that expands at a much higher rate than than you normally could predict for obviously there's going to be some steam in, in, in the plants but you have all this water mm -hmm. volume boom now steam boom you basically in the entire reactor blew up as a steam um, explosion that no, the, the one of the react the core I think it was number four control rod literally ejected out as Dapper had brought up and the guy that was standing on the upper level it impaled him it literally impaled him through the groin up through his neck and pinned yeah. him to the ceiling pinned him to the ceiling uh, this is how much force it would have that's right? that's talking some tens, that's some Vlad the 10, Impaler shit pounds <laughs> ten thousand yeah. p. 10,000 PSI is a lot of pressure. Now, to give you an indication of how much if pressure If it makes you feel, reactor, at least that dude was dead instantaneously. Oh, he, there he, he, was he died. The, 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 on the reactor incident, they, they realized that him and another guy died instantly. Now, the, the other guy, later, he, he had about two, two hours where he survived, but he was so, so badly burned because of the steam, right? But uh, he would have died anyways from reactivity. It was 1,000 uh, remote sure. contact, um, which would kill anybody. Yeah. But the, the, the um, 10,000 PSI is a lot. My reactor operated... Um, 
these are classified numbers, whatever. <laughs> Nobody cares about the E2G, but there's somewhere around 2,000 PSI, okay, which is about 100 and, oh my God, what, what is 2,000 PSI, about 150 bar? What does PSI math. stand for, Steve? Pounds per square Pounds inch. Pounds per square inch. And so you got, that's about a force per unit area. So there's, so there's a certain I'm, amount of I pressure. I apologize being, on behalf of the rest of the world for, for using silly units. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I don't. I, well, I, I'm not that familiar with bars, but if I if I had a if I had a recall, I should have like. I think that a bar is about 14 psi. Yeah. Okay. So 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 100 bars would be 1400 14, 14, psi. Mm -hmm. So 150 bars yeah. is what? Yes. About 1800. Okay. So so I mean that's still within the pressure range because because our, our operating conditions were anywhere between 1700 psi and 2000 psi. We had three safety relief valves. They were set about 2,100 and 2,200 PSI. Two of them were, were steam and one of them was water. Now, Cheshire, here's a question for you. Why do you think you would want the steam to relief <laughs> valves to release first rather than the water relief valves? Because steam is less dense? Yeah. Oh, my yes. God. I'm, Excellent. Yes, that is. Oh my, people, sixty-two IQ. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that, yeah. So two thousand no, two thousand exactly, psi exactly. is 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 one hundred thirty-six times the uh, 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 atmospheric pressure. Yeah. So when you have a water, you have losing a lot of moderator, right? You're, lo you're losing a lot of coolant. So now you're having fuel wise exposed to air. You're losing uh, coolant. So yeah, you want the you want the steam and relief valve first. Now, so anyway, so this when yeah. this blew up, it blew the ejected one out from the core and produced the entire envelope of steam in, in the in the in the in the um, uh, reactor compartment. And again, one person standing next to it died instantly. The other person was a little bit further away. How he survived two hours is beyond me. Um, but it was such a huge, a massive explosion that it literally took the entire vessel that was down there and it moved it nine feet up in the air. Just. Poof. Moved an entire freaking vessel nine feet up in the air. That's a lot of force. Yeah. yeah. So now a couple of things to to, to 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 point out about this thing is that the the this was a this was essentially a a a chemical thermal explosion. This is not a nuclear bomb, right? This was not no, a nuclear no, explosion. Not nuclear. This this is essentially this essentially is is like like having your pressure cooker on your stove pop the safety valve and go bang, right? Or, or, yeah. or, or removing yeah. the pressure cooker. It's going to do without, damage without to the immediate out. area, but it's probably not lighting your house on fire. Yes. Yes. And in fact, yeah, the other thing to point I'm out sorry, okay. is that there's a containment vessel. This was, there, this, there, there, there was, this was, it was still inside another chamber so that, so that most of the, of the stuff that came out was contained inside the containment vessels. That's why you have containment vessels is is for for that reason um but again this is, this is essentially is it's more of a chemical thing another thing that happens cheshire at, at these extreme situations you know that water it you may know the water is is formed with you know h2o two hydrogen yeah. and oxygen right at those extreme things it breaks apart the water molecule and and what you get is free hydrogen and hydrogen is incredibly explosive any hydrogen right. Uh, hydrogen with, with 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 oxygen, which you're producing by putting the water there, is just a is another chemical you know bomb, and you get that stoichiometry um, magic that occurs, where not only does a steam explosion, but then you get it you get it accelerated by by the by the chemical reaction of of the hydrogen burning with the oxygen um, that creates an enormous explosion. Um, that but which happens nevertheless in the, the, <laughs> the the containment vessel inside SL one kept it from from sending out in the countryside it kept it inside the the, right. the building so i mean the it question then comes back to that the argument of well should we no longer use um nuclear power because there are inherent risks with it i don't know are you never going to use a pressure cooker again because well, you had one explode well, here's, but, but here's maybe the thing, as, if as, it as, killed your dog as, or something that as landon it, points out are though, we overall each... never each time, each time there's an accident, each time there's something they learn from it, right? Now, this did have some right. design issues to it, okay? But it was a very low-level power reactor. The, 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 the biggest factor that they, they really should have taken into account was, one, the amount of reactivity that single rod could have had, which was a huge design problem, especially because the other control rods didn't have the effect that they used to have because they had replaced the boron with the, clay, the clay, uh, a cadmium cladding, uh, a plating, uh, what are they called? Shibs. They call them cladium shims, I think. But 
the the main fact was that the, they knew that rod was sticking, and they knew that that guy had to manually go in and try to pull that rod out just a few inches to connect it, um, and should have that is should have thought to themselves that yeah. is not a good way to run a reactor. Um, Trying to yeah, move maybe something if, manually of just a small small amount like that is just yeah. difficult anyway. Like it's very played, very difficult. Have and, you ever played yeah, pogs? I mean, well, I mean, yes. what happens when you're trying to? Yeah. How, many, how many of you guys have had a wrench where you're trying to force, a, like, a, like a, with a with a crow, you know, a, a cheater bar, and you're pushing and pushing and pushing? When that thing breaks free, you slam your knuckles on something. That's what kind of what yeah. happened. Mm -hmm. That sort of thing. So the only thing you should have done is 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 first of all to say, okay, um, we'll put in all of the, all the other control rods will go all the way in, right? And then secondly, we will mechanically begin to inch it out pun intended, um, slowly grind, pull it out as opposed to yank it out. And if and if you can't do that, then you decommission the reactor, you pull your fuel rods out and, and you remove the reactor and then you can manhandle the, 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 the rod. Yeah. That's basically like saying, that's equivalent to taking the truck and saying, okay, we're gonna park the truck, we're gonna yank out, we're gonna remove the diesel fuel tank, we'll, we'll pull out the engine and we'll work on, on the control system to, to get it Get it to be non sticky Now, now, before we move on to the um, the uh, Chen Yerbo, like Dabra had noted when we first um, kind of went on air on this, uh, not to get into too much, but there was some conspiracy theories that the person controlling the drive rod was having an affair with one of the other person's wives and things of that nature. Yeah. Um, and the only reason we mention that is because there there is a theory out there that he may not have been paying attention. He may have had other things on his mind, and so he wasn't focused on the job at hand, which is something that I think that is very critical. When you're in a situation where you have that much uh, ability to cause significant damage if you're not paying attention and unfortunately there are very few instances where lack of attentiveness can cause that much damage but they do happen um and you have yeah, to be yeah. hyper aware uh but there was a yeah. there's you know he may have not just been paying attention whether that had a significant amount of contributing factor to the accident no one really knows i don't particularly think but, so but it has been discussed. but that's sort of like blaming the iceberg for the titanic singing sinking right well i, I well it's, i it's think not and so, so my 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 situation there is that that those kind of conspiracy stuff was uh, aided and abetted by command and control chain who should have been Kurt Marshall, reduce the bull's length, oh, and given a dishonorable discharge. Right, that's the people that I think should have been it should have been hoisted up on the on the. They were totally right? negligent and absolutely negligent. And 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 so they should have you know through a number of things because again this this reactor rod problem was not something new. It was known. Furthermore, mm -hmm. this was a research reactor that was near the end of its life. Right. It was is one where they were planning on decommissioning within within a period of time, and and a, and a responsible thing would have said, you know what, we're having this much trouble with reactor, we're going to be decommissioned. We're going to do it. We decommission this early. You take the fuel out of it, and let's study why these control rods are sticking, so that when we build the next one, it doesn't have this problem. Yeah, and also I think that but the three people in that room proactive. should have understood, be, be but they should have understood the physics reactive. better. I, I no. don't think any of them and, really and should, understood the reactor core no. design such that one single rod could add so much reactivity to the core in such a little time if it was pulled out too far. I don't think they understood well, core criticality they, as well as it should. What else were they supposed to do in that situation? As like the people who were already down and in there supposed to be fixed. Well, um, again, that, but what they, other I don't think way? They were, they, they were not significantly trained in reactor physics as, as Navy nuclear. They didn't, they didn't understand they the were, consequences of what they were doing. Maybe I'm right. not asking so, my what, question very clearly. What I'm asking, if they were told to go down there by their superiors and said, go mm -hmm. fix this and pull that reactor, what else would they were they supposed to do had it knowing that they maybe did not have all of the training? Was there if you had the training not much they besides, could do. besides refusing the order, was there anything else that they could have done differently? Um I mean that's hard that's hard. Yeah. I mean, if they an elected officer to told you, rod, I guess maybe. Yeah, I mean, if, if, I mean, seriously, if an elected officer told you in your navy, "Hey, go into reactor thing and 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 grab some pliers and and pull out that rod that seemed to be sticking," right. what well, we'd have told the rod the, the officer to yeah, do. Yeah, oh, you're, you're going to right do off. it. I mean, well, if you, yeah, but I mean, if you're but that's if you understand, not have done that. Right, right. 
that's if you understand that that single rod had that much ability to control the, the, the reactor power so quickly with just a minimal amount. I mean, yeah. think about this. I mean, it was five times the amount of that it should have been raised out, rose out, but that still should not have been enough to cause a reactor to go prompt critical. Right. There's a on, on yeah. pressurized rod of reactors, they're inherently designed to have no single rod be able to go prompt critical alone for that very reason. And so because the other dumbing reactors were not as as good as they used to be, as Landon points out, as near end of age of decommission any time, these, these things were not as, as if they were initially when it was first commissioned. And so none of that was taken into account. And so they probably wouldn't have known that. They probably would not have the expertise or the, the understanding of what they were doing as far as reactivity addition rate uh, if they would have raised that rod more than they would have you know normally raised it. Now, how he raised the 20 inches is still pretty significant. I mean, even... They did testing on these things, and they had found that it just it, these things were like eighty four pounds. They're not light. It took a it took a significant amount of work to, to pull these things twenty inches as opposed to only four inches. Um, but yeah, I mean, they, they probably just didn't have the training that they probably should have had for that particular reactor. I know one of them was an electrician, um, but they they weren't anywhere near. I think what what, what they would have to be no. to go with like nuke school and qualify um, nowadays, not yeah. by any stretch of imagination. Yeah. And, and and this is again. This was a, this was the incident that you were 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 forced to study, and took tests on. We had, we had to review it. Yeah, we had to on. review it. Yeah. yeah. And and so one of the one of the one of the results of this SL one accident is I think is that the Navy nuclear program stepped up their um their their protocols and their control procedures um to 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 a much higher level. Right. I think. I think I, I would suspect that 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 this had a positive effect on the Navy nuclear program saying we can't do the same. You know, we don't do this, make the same mistake the Army did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I have no doubt. And I mean, they haven't. You, you, yeah. Matter of fact, Naval nuclear has been one of the safest. I mean, obviously, there's been minor stuff, but I mean, there's nothing significant that I know of in any nuclear reactor. Yeah. So this um, stuff is still is controlled in some degrees by the military, just not the Army part of the military. Yeah. Right. As far as I know, right now, the only branch of the military that is operating nuclear reactors for power or propulsion is the United States Navy. Yes. Yeah. Um, and and, 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 I, and, and, and commercial reactors and, re and research reactors understand that, that, that if, if you're operating an item and a control rod fails to, to, to obey controls, that is an incident. Yeah. Yes. Right. And if you're doing something like a test, are you doing saying, and you get an incident like that, you you stop your processes and you and you mm -hmm. assess the the risk, and you back off from what you're doing. You back off from the throttle and you say we've well, got a problem. So so the, the procedures yeah. now is any any rod fails to, and maybe the only th problem is the sensor is not recording accurately its position, right? Any kind of sensor failure any type of, of sensor malfunction, any type of mechanical apparent malfunction is considered an incident. It gets logged and, and, you, and you, you step back and say, hey, something might be going wrong. Let's, let's cool or cool adjust. Well, and, that's why, and, that, and that's why the, I mean, so often you have to actually scram the reactor for, to make sure that the CDRMs, CDRMs do operate the way they're supposed to open let's up just, and let's explain what a those, scram those rods to drop. Scram, uh, the scram is basically, well, oh, Subcritical. Uh, they say it used to stand for subcritical reactor acts, man, because during the initial uh, reactor piles, they literally supposedly had a guy with an axe and a rope that would cut the rope with the axe, and that would cause the rod to fall down, shutting yeah, down. Yeah, that sounds the like a, a folk etymology to me. Honestly, I think scram is much uh, more that, likely to be based on the slang word for get out of a certain place than it is to be. Yeah, that's kind of probably that's probably true. But um, so when you, we, we would do these tests every so often, and we did it minimally. And the reason why we did it minimally is because when you do those scrams, it produces a very large physical effect on the reactor core. And so every time you do it, it wears the reactor. It hurts the, the physical. Yeah, it's, it's like, like, it's like physical. yanking on the emergency brake, right? Right. You don't want to, you, but you want to test every so often. Don't so it's a trade off. That. Yeah. You know, how can you test it as opposed to, um, you know, to, to, but as far but as with a truck, if you're going to test the emergency brake, you want you, you're, you you're not going to test the emergency brake at at 100 kilometers an hour on the you're highway. Test, right, yeah. right, <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Yes. We didn't. We normally didn't do it at full reactor. You know, I mean, 
uh, well, I shouldn't say that we could be at full reactor power, but not at a high power demand where we're not like traveling yep. at, you know, so scram is really, and also we're like, scram <laughs> is, is, is a procedure where saying, let's let the controllers all back down and, and shut down the reactor. Um, Normally you want to, again, you wanna, you there, put there's a thermal slowly, shock yes. to the thing and so forth. So you don't want to do shock, that. Physical shock. Yeah. And matter of fact, you um, turn your crew into a bunch of crash test dummies. Landon, so, so to get into like Chernobyl a little bit, because it's going to lead into it, Dapper and Landon. Yes. So when you have a when you have a shutdown from a scram, um, there is a very specific gas that gets built up really, really, really quickly that prevents you from starting up again for quite a significant amount of time, which could be several hours. And then again, in a warship, that could be very bad when you lose it could your be reactors days, and you have to wait. Right. So there are there's there's a significant amount of gas that's produced called xenon, which uh, Landon had yes. talked about xenon 135, and this is going to play into Chernobyl. This is actually be a huge factor of what happened mm -hmm. in Chernobyl, because the people I, I, I'm I'm going straight, to straight, say straight up the people that was in Chernobyl were incompetent. The people that were in charge of the test, which we'll explain to you, were incompetent. The design was incompetent. Yep. The, the government was incompetent. I, there was like one failure after another when it came to Chernobyl that has, should have never, never have happened. So it's and, a little bit and, less and, of like an oops accident out of nowhere or like a one-off thing. And, and more sad, of like a, this was an L Not inevitable. even remotely so. It was one the, thing the, after another. It was complete incompetence incompetent across the board. Yes. And, and it, it is, it is, um, 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 there, there are, there are a number of these reactors um, the RBMK reactors that that were that were there. Now we well, we're going to talk about Chernobyl number four, um, but but understand right now that Russia is still operating um, eight of these reactors. That's kind of spooky. Right? And, uh, we're going to, and, just, and 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 and, and, and the Soviet the Soviet design <laughs> was extraordinarily poor. And, and and they even made mistakes in their design uh, estimations, uh, as we'll, we'll see later on. Now they've I, they've, I want to point out they have they've, added safety measures. They have added safety measures where it'll be harder for the reactor to go into the same kind of problem. However, yeah, it's um, one of the things, and this is something in particular, is that is that those reactors do not have containment vessels. They just have a That's nice little building ask. shell. Yeah. They're, they're, they're not they're not they they, they 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 have not those those reactors do not have containment vessels right and and if you're going to so if you're going to put like... sanctions on russia for doing bad things in the world one of them would be essentially until you put containment vessels or decommission those reactors mm -hmm. um, yeah it sounds like they're just you know they've got that flex tape and they're just slapping it on the side and being like no yeah. it's no, fixed. no it's true <laughs> That, that, that they have they have they have greatly reduced the ability for the other reactors right um um so so curious and 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 those there's the reactors that are that are scheduled they claim they're going to operate you know one until 2024 the last one's going to go offline in 2030 2034 right and and mm -hmm. and uh, um you know there's there's this and and that's i think is it's it comes back to I think the, 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 that, that, that impugns the current Russian nuclear uh, reactor program. The fact that they would operate these things and continue to do so, even though they have these safety designs, right? The, 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 the notion is that, okay, what they've done is they put WT-40 on the, on the, uh, on the, uh, put the throttle. Belt. We put seatbelts on They've done a little the... bit more than that, Landon. We, we Come put, on. We put okay. seatbelts on the but, Ferris but, but, wheel. But it's not. I don't think it's significant. Miles an hour. I, 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 you know, if I were in nuclear regulatory agency, I would, I would yank the operating op things for. for well, it would never, it would never fly over in America. It, it would never fly yeah. in America. It would never pass and, the, and, the and NRC. Real quick, I want to point out one of the reasons why we had this relatively dangerous design is that. Russia couldn't realistically afford to power as much as they wanted to on the basis of more traditional reactor designs like the ones that are being used in the United States. They specifically designed yes. a reactor that could work on 2% enriched uranium as opposed to the 3 to yes. 4%, which is typical elsewhere. And so, now, yeah, and, and, and I've heard that, but, but, very... but, but let me let Dapper, let me just say that I've had an opportunity to, 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 to counter to some, somebody across the iron curtain 
saying, but you've made metric tons of plutonium, which is, which is typically re, re, um, um, enriched to 90 plus percent for, for your weapon. From, from from, and you're from telling me reactors? that from you, you're, you're telling me that, 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 well, you can, you can make metric tons of, of nuclear weapon plutonium. You do this design because it, it you don't have to enrich as much. You have some rich problem. Actually, I think that the, it, you know, the issue is, is more a matter of a cost, mm-hmm. right? That, that is, it's true. Well, they were having cost. trouble building, building containment vessels is a very technically skilled, uh, uh, uh thing. Those, those containment. When we're, when we're talking about chess, we're talking about container build. We're talking about something that is that is that is massive, a, a couple meters thick, of mm-hmm. of of massive special steel, concrete Sounds reinforced, expensive. stress tested, and and, it's, 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 and in fact, the, the people who do the things now, the modern build the modern reactor vessels, container vessels, are the Japanese. They have a very specialized plant, because you're not just pouring concrete into a mold with a couple of rebar and saying, there it is, right? This, right. this, understand just, um, a, a reactor containment vessel, you can fly a, a, a jet, a, a 747 airplane, strike the, the, the ground vessels and, and the plane will be destroyed, but the, but the vessel won't, won't be pierced. Won't be, it won't be, it, it, it can survive, um, you know, it can survive tornadoes. It can survive, you know, um, um, things going in, 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 into it and very, very specific things. But you have to build really special armor piercing shells just to begin to chip away at the thing. Well, so, Landon, so, Landon. so, how about, how about we kind of like explain important? what, what happened in Chernobyl? I mean, what was the, the what was going yeah. on there? Because, but, but, so, so one of the things I want to point out is, is, is that, that, that the big, this, that, that reactor can missile is one of the really important things you want to do, right? So it's basically like it. this type, so the same type of reactor that Chernobyl was using is one, still being used today. Two, yes, yes. Um, does have some duct tape on it to make it safer. However, does well, not, not have, not literally, no. But does not have what Landon would be considered at minimum <clears throat> necessary to be willing to yes. run yeah, the, the All right, well, well, let's back up a little bit. Reoccur. Yeah, let's back but, up a little but, bit. But, okay, but, so there's, there's, a, there's a couple there's a couple factors here. First of all, um, in in a pressurized water reactor, there's something called the positive temperature coefficient of reactivity. And this is the and kind that, that Chernobyl means, was, right? No, no. no. Well, hang on. No. Okay. Yes and no. Yeah, this is where it, this is where it gets a little bit technical here. So bear with me. Oh, this is in where a, we're going to get technical. Yeah. <laughs> in a, pre, no, in a okay. pressurized. Okay. I'll get a notebook. Hold on. We it gets far worse here coming now. up. Okay. In, got, in a pressurized right. water reactor, okay, in the, what, when we have a negative temperature coefficient of reactivity, that means that as the moderator heats up, the distance between the hydrogen atoms, the molecules themselves and the water molecules themselves, causes the electro, I mean, the neutrons to have to travel further in the mean free path to have the, in order to get thermalized. So as the water heats up, it gets less dense, has a bigger mean free path, the neutrons take longer to thermalize, and so the overall effect is that the reactor wants to shut itself down because you have less thermalization of the well, Steve, let me let me let me rephrase what you've just said, right? Chess, remember no the, the, the moderator chess, the moderator is the thing that's slowing down the neutrons. If if you spread out the moderator, right? Yeah. So 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 chess. Um Are those kidneys? Um, remember the moderator remember, no, remember eyeballs, Steve. The, no, no, so oh, pay, pay attention. If this is important. Sorry, go ahead, Landon. The moderator is the thing that slows the neutrons down so they can be captured, right? Oh, uh, right. And if you spread out the moderator, you make it less dense. Right. Then it's not as it's not moderating as effectively, right? And so the neutrons have to go a bit farther to be moderated. So and, it's and like having a far, sponge. They can escape. Yes. You're, the thicker your sponge is, the harder the water is going to have a time going through the sponge. Yeah, which you remember because yeah, you're trying to moderate, you're trying to slow them down. Right. Yeah. Slow the neutrons down. If, if you have, it's Got called it. lethargy. Don't use so a you, water balloon as a filter on your tap. Each no, time no. a neutron, a neutron a neutron hits something, it could be absorbed, it could cause fission, it could cause electromagnetic radiation, or it can cause scattering. 
Scattering is an inelastic collision where you have a, a amount of imparting of a kinetic energy. Pew, 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 pew. And yes. so the neutron slows yeah. down bang, a little bang, bit, bang, 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 gets bang. thermalized, and each time it hits something, it gets more thermalized. Now, if it has further to go, it's going to take longer to thermalize, right? So that is an, a very inherently, that's an inherently stable design. Now, Chernobyl was designed to have a negative temperature coefficient activity. However, under yeah. certain conditions where the physics existed, it would have a positive coefficient of reactivity, which means that the moderator, yeah. because of the graphite, which is part of the moderation, actually okay. made it more so, so they would so, add reactivity. So, so, so stop, stop, Steve, stop, and, stop. You, you, you crossed over a really important point. You know, remember, you know, Chester, we're talking about the water, moder being a moderator. In the RBMK, they did not use water for a moderator. They used graphite, pencil okay. lead. Yes. Right? Well, they used both. It's still water, but, too. But, 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 but water. the primary, no, the primary like moderator in, in, in the primary moderator in RBMK is graphite, right? Yes. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and what they used the water for was, you know, besides rendering steam to drain power, is that, that it actually, it actually had a, a again, go ahead. Well, he transferred coolant. Well, they were actually boiling the, that primary coolant. Right. So most other reactors that we operate in the US, the stuff, the water that touches the reactor doesn't itself boil, if you're using it for power generation. It goes through a heat exchanger and heats a different set of water that's physically separated. That boils and that turns uh, some, uh, you know, some, Turbine. This okay, was, so it's got. Remember, like a having system. steam inside the reactor vessel is a bad thing. Right. You don't so, want to have. You don't want to be freaking drops of steam. On a current system, you have one chamber that has water as a filter, right? And then yeah, that. Well, throw, up the, throw up the diagram. Throw up the diagram for the pressurized I'm, water reactor. I'm making sense. the diagram. No, we and sent then, you a diagram. <laughs> And then you she get, wants a great one from scratch. And then you I, get, I, I, I'm trying to understand. Are, if I draw it myself, this, this, this I can called, understand. This is called the Cheshire design. It's the Cheshire is... design nuclear reactor. Okay. And so then. Cheshire it, Oval. It goes, <laughs> Cheshire Oval. It goes into another one where it starts boiling. So it's got a whole different system so it's got like cool over here and hot over here and it keeps those two things yep. separated whereas Chernobyl did yep. not do that Chernobyl yeah, had it all their primary it, coolant. they were born okay. yeah you I understand yeah. So in, the, in, in the pressurized water reactor there's a pressurizer that has it's like steam. trying it's to light it. it's like trying to ignite the gas in your well, car in the gas well, tank but yes. think about this you have, you have, a, you have a certain amount of you have a certain amount of volume of water you have a certain amount of volume in the reactor right in the pressurizer, you have a steam blanket that's existing in the reactor, but it's pushing down on the water. Pascal's pressure law states that the pressure exerted on enclosed fluid at rest will be transmitted equally and diminished throughout the fluid and to the walls of its container. So you have this big steam blanket that's pressing on the water and the pressurizer. That's causing an equal distribution of pressure out the system, keeping that water from boiling. You're and keeping it in liquid form. Was bad for what reason? Well, there's a couple of things that's going to happen with the graphite. Yeah, that, this is that it's, again, it's going to get really technical with the it's, graphite. It's bad on a number now, of let, scales. Let, let, now let we're exactly getting technical. Right. The, the, the graphite, the graphite was a was the primary moderator, but uh, the the water itself did act as absorption. It did have an effect on the reactor because it was designed to have that water absorb a certain amount of neutrons, so you had a better control of reactivity added to the core. Now, what they were trying to do in this test, they were trying to do this is what happened in Chernobyl. They were trying to do a test. They wanted to see if you had a loss of electrical grid power, if the turbines would continue to produce power on a spin down after the reactor shut down. Okay. So remember, saying, and okay, look, stop, 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 one minute. One, one thing that's important to understand about reactors is you scram the rods, but you still have heat. Right. You still have the heat, heat you still have physical go momentum. away. Right. You still have yeah. mechanical energy. And, and you so, still have a and system. And so you need to still, you need to still cool the reactor even though you've lost power right and so the question they wanted to know so they wanted to know this is the test they were trying to do was if because it takes power to run a power plant if if you yes. lose power can you do you have enough spin in your turbines to keep the thing cool enough to not have problems this is what they were actually were testing they didn't know they wanted to test to show that it wouldn't be a problem 
That doesn't sound yes. like an unreasonable thing to test. So Not what went wrong? To do that on a live reactor? And Got it. So they, they did it in not a very well-controlled environment. <coughs> they hit the e-brake on the highway going 200 miles an hour yeah. because they wanted to yeah. see how fast they could go at the same time. So so let's look, look at this. Look at this that diagram we have right now, right? The 3200, I believe, is the, is the, is the, is the power that, that the normal reactor is running on. They wanted to lower it down to 1,000. They would still have, so, so they were still generating some, some power. They'd have enough for water flow, a, a, to deal with the steam and the control and a power control margin, right? That's those, those, those lines down there. But they said, we're going to bring it down near the point of crashing and, and see whether or not if we, if we, if we actually disconnect the, 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 the power from the thing, whether the turbines being spin have enough momentum to keep us going. Cause they thought, well, well, we'll have, a little bit of room between that 1000 and 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 the below thing so that if we ran into problems we could turn the turbines back on and 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 bring us back out of the dive so that it was kind of like saying you're, you're flying a plane and you want to know well what happens if we cut fuel to the engines will we be able to coast and restart the engines just from the speed of of, of the plane going through the air well, right, exactly. Like a stall. We'll bring it down near the ground, but not too close to the ground, and and <clears> form this test to see, in fact, if this safety works. Now, now this example of, I mean, it's bad enough they had to do the test because they didn't know, and it's and 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 then it gets worse. You think it's getting bad yeah, now? Yeah. So, so, so <laughs> think about think of this. So they're they're operating at about thirty two hundred megawatts, right? And yeah, I, I the, the, in of itself, the test kind of makes sense to why they wanted to do it. However, whoever designed this test did not understand this type of reactor system. OK, they were what they instead of shutting the reactor down to see if coasting and everything was going to be, to be able to de release the, you know, the, the thermal energy from the decay heat and to dissipate it and to drive the turbines. Usually you have a, in your turbine system, you have a high pressure side and a low pressure side. And this is designed and then you extract the most amount of energy from the steam as possible which is your, your, it's called enthalpy. So you have a high pressure side that has a very high pressure amount of, of steam coming in there. Then whatever's last over and then more of an exhaust was a low pressure, the other stage, the low pressure takes over. They wanted to see if that system could do exactly what Landon yeah, said. They wanted to slow down, left. but they, yes. cut, they cut everything and went into neutral, but they were on a hill. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but, but, but what's going that. worse that happened worse that. is that, is that yeah. Chesh, what they're supposed to have done was to have reduce their power down to that nominal level, down to actually about a thousand mm -hmm. megawatts, megawatts and from 3,200. And, and what happened was some other operator, cause they're, I think they're, 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 this is, this is, this was powering, I think Kiev, I think was the thing. And, and, and what, what they, they said in advance is, Hey, we're going to be dropping the power down. Kiev. So, so and other places in, in, in that are, that are part of the Chernobyl grid. So get power from someplace else because we're going to be reducing our power. Mm -hmm. And and what happened was somebody came back at a state level and said, no, 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 no. Um, we don't have the ability to 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 get power from other places because at the end of the month we have to do a report on how efficient we've done our, and what we met our quota. And so we don't want you to reduce power, right? Because because it'll make my quotas look bad. Yeah. And 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 we're having problems we'll get getting power from someplace else. This sounds like middle so, management to me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Soviet exactly. middle management. Soviet, Soviet middle management. Yeah, so I don't, one thing that, that, uh, they, 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 I don't remember the guy's name, but he actually was, I, I don't speak Russian, so I don't know any of these guys, Russian's names, and I didn't even, can't even remember them. But yes, this is exactly what happened. He was a Russian middle management on this. <laughs> and, and so so one thing that happened like was- like American they, middle management's any fucking better. <laughs> so, so sure, sure, they should have. They, they should have essentially the notified. Their, they, they notified the grid. Hey, you know, and in in a day or so, we're going to be you know reducing our power down. Get used to it. Find power elsewhere, and and instead they said no. Keep your power up. Now they say, hey, the the the, the quote your orders say do this test. Do this test now because we want to see if this reactor is safe. Okay. Yeah, so you and got so like, yeah, yeah. But this, 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 spoiler alert. And, this, and they this, need to be down, they need to be down low, right? They're up high, you want to be down low. So, 
So They're effectively, they decided, pull. let's just let's just let's just do a little power dive to get down there. Yeah, not good, not good at all. So they tried uh, to have so, their so, cake so, and eat it too. So, so yeah. So yes. by the way, Fred and Maddock, welcome to Initiate. We had a new member. Thank you for joining us, Fred and Maddock. Thank yeah. You. So uh, this was very bad because they were operating at this very higher level, which they were not supposed to be doing. Uh, they were supposed to be between about seven hundred thousand milliwatts, or it's megawatts. Uh, megawatts. So they wanted uh, to do this, but they ended up doing this. Well, imagine imagine yeah. being really super high at thirty two thousand feet, um, and you're, you're trying to do an experiment where you're only supposed to be at maybe ten thousand feet, right? The difference is is that in this particular reactor. When you have that high of operational megawatt that you're at, and you do that very steep controlled dive, right, at high altitude, it's like the air is rarefied. You don't want to do something where the air is rarefied. You're going to have less, you know, um, combustion for your jets. Well, kind of something similar happened here. There's a gas that's produced at very low energy uh, called the Z Xenon-135, which, which Landon had, had said before, which is a very strong neutron absorber, okay? Very effective. It's like 10,000 uh, times any, anything else it's super absorbent for these neutrons and so uh -huh. when they were operating this and they took this dive all of a sudden there was this buildup being produced of xenon 135. now what do you think they did when they said they thought they, they they said to themselves this this was their brilliancy they said hey look we're lowering reactor power here we're, we're, we're lowering this reactor power um we're trying to do this very controlled um situation we want to have a low power condition and then see if it can have enough energy, you know, enough to drive the turbines. But they noticed that the reactor was getting lower power. power. They were noticing that the, it, it, the it reactor was going lower and lower and lower. It was lower and lower and right. lowering. And they did going they lower than what the test required them to do. So can right. you go to the and next they didn't slide? Realize, they didn't realize that the xenon was building, building up, Jess. So what do you think they did yeah. to try to compensate for that xenon that they didn't recognize was building up? What, what, they, what, they, what do you think they did to the rods? To try yeah. to add more activity to reactivity yeah, to the car. It sounds to me like they try to overcorrect. They raised. Yeah. They were well, raising think, them up. <laughs> yeah, they right. pulled I them think out. At this point, it is important to to talk about the construction of the RMBK control rods because they're yeah. a little unusual. Most reactor control yes. rods are just a poison, basically, and so as they raise up, you remove that neutron poison, so fewer neutrons are stopped by the poison in the rods. You get higher reactivity, but in this case, because this was such a essentially sort of an inefficient reactor because they were only um, enriching uranium to about 2%, they actually ended the control rods in a few meters of graphite, which as we pointed out is what they were using to moderate. So as you draw the control rods out, you not only replace um, the poison, you actually add moderator to the system. And so that actually starts to boost reactivity. So in order to draw these rods out, you're actually not just removing that poison, you are adding additional moderator, which will yes. become quite important very, very soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, it's, that, it's that, not that, the that safest tip, thing. Tip, the, the, tip, the tip of this, these control rods having that, that um, graphite moderator as the very tip played a, well, yeah. is our, it, the, the accident still would have happened, but it played a significant, even made the accident extremely worse as we're going to find out going oh, yeah. on here. So landed. So what? So what so, was happening here? So they have they have this xenon buildup. They are raising rod height to try to get more reactivity to the core. Because because, because, because now the reactor power is too low, and so they need mm -hmm. to bring the power up to a level. Because remember, they that the notion is, do they have enough spin in the turbines to to power the controls for the reactor? And the reactor is down too low that the turbines aren't going to be spinning enough for them to do this test. Right, it, 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 it's sort of like saying you know, you're going to stall the engines to see if you can restart them in flight, and they're too close to the ground. Mm -hmm. Pull so up, what they, do? they start Sink pulling rate. off the, they, they start pulling out the control rods more and more and more. In fact, I'm looking at, and I wish I wish there there, there are a couple of diagrams that didn't get on the list, um, for 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 that set, but but they ended up um, on. At, at one point in this 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 situation, you know, they had pulled out um, nearly all of the control rods. Right? They they had pulled out Not well beyond thing. the number that they were supposed to have 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 pulled on on right because they were on, desperate on to vessel. get power back. They needed to get yeah. power back, right? And I, if I'm not mistaken, this was still being supplied to Kiev at the time, was it not? Yes. So they yes. still playing on the grid. Uh, so they wanted to make sure they still yes. had the power. 
Um, and so they're like, wait a minute, this is going way too low. Why is reactor dropping down? Not realizing that the buildup of the xenon was, was being burned and that was causing a bunch of reactivity being lost because of the xenon. So they had to compensate that by re adding reactivity to the core by re adding uh, raising rod height, which again, weighs them way more than designed for way more um but they landon were so if you would like to power out of it if, if you would like you can send yes. me that picture and i'll throw it up for you okay this just, on, just on right. yeah just on discord is fine this this was so not we, a pressurized water point, reactor so the complete design was different so at this point we're starting to actually like are we at the point where now where we're starting to get the uh the void coefficient for reactivity into the picture yeah there's two there's two i'm gonna send you two i'm gonna send you two diagrams <laughs> One, this at this at these lower operating temperatures, right? Or these, these wattages, um, you have now a positive temperature coefficient of reactivity. But you also have what's called a positive void coefficient, and a void is something where you do not have water there, basically like a steam bubble, or you have something that is going to be um, uh, not of a water or graphite uh, moderator. You have, you have, I think of it as a void, like a, a bubble of some kind, right? Now bubbles don't transfer heat it's very well. This is why we don't tin. want. This is why we don't want bubbles in a pressurized water reactor it doesn't produce, doesn't yeah. conduct it efficiently uh cooling by, by the way in this particular here here's here's a yeah. here's a diagram of of the reactor that that you see there yeah. so you see there's control rods and they have yep. they have the the, the 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 water in the system that's also the that that also does the steam generation and it's producing boiling see that? right so you have the steam generation in that system rather than a secondary system instead of a steam generator in right. a secondary loop we have it in the primary system now because of the because of the, this is a very bad design by the way the, the, having a positive void coefficient meant that as you had more steam buildup you had more reactivity going to the core reactivity of the mm -hmm. core is bad if you're trying to control a reactor could, could remember remember uh, so, it, 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 but let's 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 make sure ahead, people understand sure. The, the, the the terms here i need um, a beer when 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 the power goes up heat goes up and, and you're more able to create steam. When you create steam, mm -hmm. it becomes less effective in, in, as, a, as a moderator and your power goes up, which causes more steam to be generated, which causes more power, more steam. Da, 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 well, da, well da, hang, on, hang, on, hang on, hang on. It's less effective as a moderator, but as you pointed out, graphite was the primary moderator in the system. That's, that's the effect that it was having. So the graphite was moderating this, these, these, the, the, the neutrons, so, but the water was turning into steam, which was causing a void coefficient to be positive, which was adding more reactivity to the core, which is a very bad design. So would changing the moderator from graphite to something else have prevented this or lessened it? I think they should- Changing it to a pressurized amount. water vessel is would much have yeah, not caused this. Yeah. Yeah. Now yeah. with that, so now I also point to out be contained in its own yeah. section. And, then. And, it would have. Yeah, and I think I'm going to point out again with this this diagram. There's no containment vessel around this thing. Mm -hmm. This is all is all open, right? For for the set and 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 when you looked at the when you looked at the, the, the state they had of of the control rods, um, you know, I sent you a, a, I think a, a another diagram. That showed you sort of the what the what the control rod grid state looked like at the time. All right. Um, here, this, what we're, what we're seeing is that that they had, you know, they had. Um, so the blue are the neutron sources. Um, the greens are the control rods, but most of those have been 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 pulled out. And the and the automatic control rods are the twelve that are there. So they had pulled out uh, most of the control rods, and they had also had 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 pulled out a good number of the of the uh, automatic control rods as well. So so they were Correct. flying at, at 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 maximum throttle um, uh -huh. when when the when the event occurred. Um, now. Now there's there's a there's that there's that curve back back to the curve of what happened if you look at the if you look at the the if you go back to the the that that curve that had the the thing with the, the little zip at the end right so 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 they're operating at 3200 they dropped it down 
and they and but then but they kept kept going down more and more and more. The reason why is because you had to build up the xenon one thirty five that delayed production. Remember, it takes several hours for that xenon to actually to decay to, to form the xenon. It doesn't happen instantaneously. This is this is a result of of a mistake that occurred several hours ago. So the power keeps dropping, 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 right? And so they need to get back up to um, around a thousand or so uh, megawatts to do the test. And so it keeps dropping down rather than say something's going on here, let's abort the test. They decided to just pull out more rods and more rods. And in fact, they, the, 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 their, their own regulation manuals say, don't pull out this, you know, this is the maximum of control rods you can, you're allowed to pull out. And they pulled out nearly everything. And, 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 to get it to, and, and if they would have aborted the test, they would have, what should have done was called a controlled reactor shutdown, which did not happen here. They did not do a controlled would've. reactor shutdown, which made it 10,000 times worse, which we'll explain here coming up. But um, yeah, so, so imagine having all these rods up there. You have all this reactivity. So if you, you look, you you look at the thing on, on the thing that says, yeah, at 119, operators pull out control rods beyond the allowable limits to reach 200 megawatts. Right, they were they were going down. They went down to thirty megawatts. They pulled out nearly all the rods to try to get to two hundred. Mm -hmm. Right, and now now they yep. they they started getting alarms. And what did they do with alarms? Well, they just silenced them because they're annoying. As somebody who's yeah, worked in manufacturing, sounds. yes. <laughs> and by the way, three and, and at one point, similar with that, they ignored the one of the one of the, of the things because because well. one of the things also they did not have even as cameras to look in on this thing. They had to send someone out of the control room up there to say, can you go see what's what's happening? Cause, cause you know, this, this thing's gonna be kind of weird. And what did the person report? They reported that, that, the, that the rods were jumping up and down. That, that the they're, rods they're were vibrating. Boing, they were jumping. Boing, yep. boing, boing. They, they were not liking boing, 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 boing. this. Be, be, because that why? should have been because a hit, by steam, the way, don't right? you think? <laughs> The control so rods were being pushed up, out, and back down, right? The pressure. Because the steam pressure was pushing up on the control rods, causing them to be even less controllable and creating little flashes. Now, there's another thing. You think it's bad. There's another really dumb design that they did to the control rods. The tip of the control rod was enhanced. What the trip control rod had was um, a large graphite block. So when you pull the control rod out, you got a little extra boost in power. So, so one of the things is that 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 not only could they pull the control rod out far, but they could bring in stuff to have super moderation going on to enhance power even more. So by, by, by pulling out the control rod, you pulled in to the place where the control rod was sitting, a graphite block. So, so instead of having the control rod be just computer control rod, they wanted to have a, a, a graphite block at the bottom. So when you pull this rod out, you can actually have an accelerator. You can have the control rod accelerate. Well, I mean, that kind of makes sense why you see this chart doing what you see that chart doing when you get to the end when it just shoots up like crazy because well, it's... well that actually that that actually happens at the end not quite yet um, well i'm looking at the the, uh, the uh, 119 right the operators are pulling yeah. all the ra all the rods yes. out and yeah. then there's a delay and then whoop! well okay think yeah. about what's happening in the lay here so you have now in this situation this is the state of the, of the reactor you have all these rods are going to be very high you have a lot of steam being produced because of the reactivity in the core. And so as it's all jumping around, they, ha they, are going to, they, they are going to terminate this experiment, okay? They are going to terminate it. Um, they, they, but, but Landon, what happens when they go to actually do a termination and they try to it terminate the experiment? It seems like, with, uh, if I'm reading this correctly, let me know, this spot right here, where they've like dropped down like crazy, between here and here, like this line, dotted line, this is, they should have just done a shutdown, controlled shutdown, and then just yeah. allowed this. Because remember, it's Xenon buildup took about six yeah. hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why, why, why? Look, why at, look they, at the time frame. Not 14, 14. They're not recognizing. 14. Sorry, yeah, 1400 yeah, between Xenon here take several, and 12. Several hours to days to burn, to burn off. So Xenon has to take several hours at a minimum, usually, before you can start a new reactor startup. Matter of yeah. fact, when, even in a pressurized water reactor, it takes at least two to three hours before we can do a reactor startup again. 
because if we didn't wait for that, we'd have to raise the reactor height yeah, much higher than normal and burn a lot more fuel in order to compensate for that xenon in the core. The timeline is starting at 100, like 1 a.m. And then goes, to, they start the drop, and then between 13, which is 1 p.m. Yeah. and 2 p.m., there's this mm -hmm. big delay. Then there's a gap of time, but that gap in time is between 2 and 11.10 at night, like 11.10 p.m. Yes. And then it gets this drop yes. again, and then there's this dotted line here, which I'm not entirely sure. Oh, that's the day. That's the day rollover. Um, yeah. At 12.28 8 at p.m. That's the next day. So that's noon the next day. They should is, shut off automatic control. Shut off automatic control, yeah. Yes. Which which could which might have might have done something, might have not. The point is that 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 there's a there's a similar amount of time between almost twelve hours between the, the when it the reason why, for example, it went so low is because xenon 135 built up. You know, again, if you talk about in terms of xenon, um if 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 um, something like you know uh, let's say hydrogen has a has a absorption coefficient of 0 0.2, xenon 135 has a co absorption coefficient of two million. Yeah, and then xenon 135 thousands of folds. Xenon is 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 ten million times more effective and absorber. Yeah, so so the reason could, why you could literally... the reactor power kept dropping, dropping, dropping. Remember, they're pulling the control rods out. And reactor power is dropping, and the reason why is because this thing, which is ten million times more effective in absorbing neutrons, is has been building up in in the reactor. Right. So, and, and then and, and, between twelve thirty, basically twelve thirty p.m., like noon, and the next tag is not until <clears throat> one nineteen, which is one a.m. the next day. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's uh, yeah. Around if I'm not mistaken, about that time, that's when they really wanted to see if there was enough residual to keep the turbines going on, on the grid. Yeah. Okay. But at that so particular were, time, they were worried that they were going to not only not form the tests, but they would fail to lose power. quotas or power, and and yeah. and Kiev might go in a blackout situation. And they they and they, so they were really concerned about that. But think how much energy is now in this reactor. How much energy thermal energy is in that reactor that has caused steam voids that have produced more even more reactivity of the core because of the it's, it's, positive it's, coefficient it's, it's, of, it's very of, of important to understand when you talk about 200 200 watts of power level right there still is an enormous amount of nuclear reactions going on in, in the reactor yeah you didn't Why? stop the it you, you, didn't, shut, you right. didn't shut anything off right. you just exaggerated the problem by trying to overcorrect and and by, way correct, by the way <laughs> but by, by, by pulling controllers out now you're generating even more with the non-gas but but that's that yeah it's it's, it's it's a stacking it's, problem. So, 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 Snowballs. So there was, yes. already, there was already going to be, there. this was going to thermal runaway effect that you were already going to have a steam explosion. This, this was inevitable. The steam explosion was going to happen, okay? But there was two, actually two explosions. There was a steam explosion. Then it was the, uh, as Lana pointed out, the, the hydrogen explosion because of the disassociation of, of, of water, H2O, into hydrogen and oxygen because of, of the So explain, the, what, explain this, this curve, what we're seeing. But, all right, so... This particular curve on the amount of time after reactor shutdown is saying, okay, after we shut down normally reactor, Zero. we recognize Zero there's down. going to be, See there? we're going to, mm -hmm. yeah, we recognize there's going to be a specific amount of xenon being produced in the core that's going to take to 136 um, and then burn off. And then it's going to absorb the, the neutrons. We have to wait till that goes away because it's going to be a poison to the core. It's going to reduce the amount of reactivity to the core, making your K effective lower than one because we want to be critical, obviously. We want to have a criticality where you have your multiplication factor of one. So each generation of neutrons, you have the same amount. But you have this poison in here, and that's absorbing these neutrons. And again, you can raise rod height to compensate for that, which they did, which is okay to a point, but normally you let it burn off as much as possible, right? And then you raise rod height where you don't have to worry about it anymore. So this gives you an idea of how many, how many times, how, how long after shutdown you have to say, okay, where can we start adding reactivity to the core that's not going in to just counter the, uh, to counteract the effects of the xenon. That's what this, because this it sounds to me that it was just incredibly reactive and not proactive because they were yes. trying to respond to an emergency that they created because they were trying to do two things at once that they couldn't really do yes. in 
congested. Yeah, and they were they were by the way, this was again, they were done at this point. This was a this was an inevitability that's gonna happen at this point. They had they had reactor rise way out there. They had so much ending that system, this was going to to, to blow. Okay. Yeah, the reactor, so, so, but, so, so so even though the power wasn't wasn't during the much power, there was a lot of nuclear reaction going on in there and, and heat has been getting to, to, to build up, right? Um, because they've, they've run into this, they've run into this, 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 this problem. Um, and so if you look at the next slide, I think. Okay. So this is what, one of the things that, 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 that happened. Well, actually go to the next slide because these are two out of order, I think. Yeah. So that's what happened, right? Um, now, the, but this, the, the amount of after, power. This was after the scram, right? Was this before the scram or after the yeah. scram? This picture here was this, this just after the scram of this. This, this is the explosion. Yeah. That, okay. That, right. Okay. So so and, let's explain. Let's, of, let's, let's explain. Let me let's explain ahead. that happened with the scram and why this explosion actually happened. Um, because as you yeah, that's this a good is idea. Critical. <laughs> no pun. No, no this pun is intended. where that graphite. <laughs> this is where that, that graphite, graphite tip. Comes tip. In. All right. So so I want everybody to picture this. You have now these control rods that are sitting very high in this reactor. You have all this energy in the system, and you have these. Control rods that are tipped with graphite, which is a which is a very effective moderator that's going to add reactivity to the core. When they went to go mm -hmm. shut down this reactor to terminate the experiment, right? They released the control rod drive mechanism. These things fell down. They didn't fall down all the way. Some of them actually got stuck partly through where the where the graphite core was at the height of the max amount of, of neutron flux. What happens when you have graphite that's being exposed to a large amount of neutron flux? What's going to have to react? It moderates to the core? a large amount of neutrons. Yes, which that means you get one of change. <laughs> yeah. So basically, the reason that this is a an iffy design to put it mildly to put uh, a moderator on the end of your control rods, is control rods are supposed to lower power when they go down. But when you have your control rods tipped in a moderator, they can actually temporarily increase power on the way down, which is what happened. They increased power right. on their way down, and some of them got stuck in that position. And it almost immediately resulted in a Which runaway reaction. That, so, so, you, so the think, tip, the think, tip wait. of the rods, this is by design, has this accelerator. So, it's, so it's like what they, they, they say, you know, if if you're, you're pushing the gas into the uh, diesel into the engine, and to give that gas a little bit of push, you'll emit a spark, get a diaminical explosion to push, right, to give it a little bit more, Silver uh, more, more juice. Has an interesting you, you, question that says. Yeah. Um, let me just grab it here. Um, if it needs hours or days to burn off Xeon, but it's a gas, could they not just vent it? No, because it's in, most of this gas is in solution, right? And, so it's, and not, also, it's not gas by itself. It's not steam by itself. And as much as you um, can vent steam, it's still going to create so much pressure. You, you could you could vent it, of course. But one of the problems, of course, is that they, they don't have a containment vessel to vent it in. So it'd be inventing out to the to environment. You could vent, well, I think um, you could vent the hydrogen easier than the xenon because, but uh, normally you vent hydrogen off so you don't. Well, you'll get you get some tritium in there as well. You'll have tritium but in like that, said, in it's, that hydrogen. It's all too. it's all diffused. Yeah, but do you do you but, think? But do you but think it's, that it's, it's, it's a bad it's you a bad, it's a bad situation stuck right? because of thermal effects. I do think that because they have there are such high pressure and temperatures that the reactor is not designed for at that point because it you had such a high amount of reactivity in the core that there was just maybe some kind of buckling or well i don't mean buckling as a neutron buckling but buckling but, but i mean things are material. expanding and and remember right, one of the things that, that happens is remember remember so said that this is this is the water there is being boiled and so you're trying to push a control rod down against boiling water yeah you've already you're trying to push it down into something that's yeah. already and, 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 it, and by the way it's, sink it's, down it's, but it displaced takes, the water it takes too. A slow amount of time, yeah. and at the tip of these stupid control rods is an accelerator, mm -hmm. is an accelerant. Might as well put kerosene so on, the, on it. That's basically what it was. It was keros throwing kerosene and already burning fire. No, yep. which and, of and, course and the power, then I mean, the power oh, jumped up enormously. Right, that the, 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 the maximum thirty two hundred megawatts reactor ran into almost it, 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 at one point they figured i think the numbers are, are credi credible to, to show they were probably running in the two terawatt range so two trillion yeah, watts I, of thermal power got, 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 got generated in the core and and that explosion you see there is because you you have flashed that 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 super um um concentrated ball, ball of energy there 
And so you have you have a steam explosion plus you 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 break yeah. apart water. You have hydrogen. Hydrogen then that then, then, then detonates and a chemical explosion, and and you have no containment vessel. You can't take it off the heat. So so when you go to the next go to the previous slide. There, yeah, I mean, we went from three thousand megawatts to, to thirty thousand right. megawatts. That that, that large degrees. chunk was was basically was, was sort of concrete lid on the bottom of the thing that 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 flew up in the air, came back down, and by the way, that that, that little pile of stuff over there, that, that lot of the control, lot of the reactor control rod stuff, launched in the air and came back down nearby in that spot where they have the pile. See the the thing where they said they dropped. Uh, Material from a helicopter. The reason why they dropped material there was that that's where a lot of those 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 reactor fuel rods were were, were sitting. Oh, okay. They launched in the air, came back down, and, and hit there. Right. No containment vessel. No. You have a. You so have it blew the entire vessel up. Reactor. Yeah. This this is a huge system, right? Oxi it's, being it's oxidized. Really yeah. It's like somebody but tapping still, your beer and then you're trying to catch it in your mouth. This yep. isn't a nuclear explosion. This is still fundamentally very different from what happens in a nuclear it, it, bomb. So yeah. again, just want to make yeah. that yeah, clear. This, this is a, a chemical. There. There, was, there was a steam yeah. explosion. There was a hydrogen explosion because of the oxidation. Because now you yeah. have these elements being exposed to air, which oxidizes. Yeah. And so you have a hard disassociation of water into oxygen and hydrogen. Hydrogen being high concentration, which is very explosive. Yeah, yeah. I just want to put that there because a lot of people conflate nuclear incidents with nuclear explosions and they're very different right, even when there's an explosion with the nuclear incident the, the, because it's yeah, a nuclear reactor that, well there's two yeah. things that prevent this from being a nuclear, a nuclear explosion one insufficient amount of fissionable material and two insufficient geometry of the fissionable material impossible yeah, yeah so, they're, they're not yeah. you have to you have to pack it in special ways in order to get to go yeah to, to go to that's go to be a very specific um, geometric configuration right but yeah. but but that's a that's for another topic on how to do nuclear Nuclear oh, let's do bombs. For, for, <laughs> nuclear um, bombs. So how could we land in null? Yeah, so let's get us to demonetize this land and talk I, about uh, super secret clearance stuff. When, when I, great. You ask you how do I know this stuff? Because when I went to school, I was doing the school do the other reaction, right? And and we wanted to basically avoid when you're trying to make a nuclear device, you're trying to avoid nuclear reactor controls, right? And it's very hard to get it. Landon to, to actually worked on something. nuclear weapons design. <laughs> Allegedly. Um, but, but suppose you didn't confirm the design. Out, I want to point out, by the way, can you do the one uh, to, to the last two reactions? Show the nuclear accidents and then the and then the the, the, yes. the death toll rate. I actually just happened to have pulled that up. <laughs> well, look at that! So, look at that! So they have they have scales of of how bad an incident is, right? Um, and and, and now these are again not bombs. These are not fallout Not radiation bombs. poisoning no, no. type accidents or incidences these are just these, incidences these, yeah, at yeah. reactors yeah so these these are these are incidences that 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 occur um and at four they call it an accident right and yeah. and 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 eight is sort of the maximum set so you see there the one which one, so one was level four, one if i'm not mistaken um is, is level seven right um, yeah, SLO and, was and was, yeah, yeah, the other, so door, that other drawing dot there, that's, that's Fukushima. Um, as, as Way far as these are, these are basically, basically the same color guys. Yeah. And, 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 and I believe the one we talked about the SL one is the blue dot near 1960 at level four down yeah, there. Yeah, it was level four. Or the other blue dot. Yeah. The US blue dot. Now. Now, what was where was Three Mile Island level? Because Argentina and of, America are also the same color. Uh, I Three Mile Island was a partial Three Mile loss Island of is, a, is, is the blue dot in nineteen eighty three. I think it was a four. Nineteen eighty three had to be a four because yeah, because yes. it was a significant event that caused um, exposure to the core, but because of the design of Three Mile Island, they had a container vessel. That's why yeah. it didn't Imagine cause anywhere that. near the damage that Jen no. I mean, plus it was yes. a much different situation. Um, so the blue dot again, near 1980 is is the Three Mile Island one. one. One thing that should be noted that on Three Mile, we were going to talk about Three Mile Island, but one thing that's interesting about Three Mile Island is that they literally did the same thing in Chernobyl. They ignored their warning signs. The thermal couples on Three Mile Island were registering on the computer system 
a question mark. It didn't, they didn't understand that that question mark meant that it was so high of temperatures that the computer didn't know how to process it. So they didn't, they were like, oh, it's just malfunctioning. So they kept overriding alarms and setting off automatic uh, systems where you can have coolant going into the, the reactor. What happens when you have a system where you don't have enough cooling going in, it gets very hot. And so uh, that's what happened to Fibre Island. It was basically human error because they didn't understand their own system. I have two yeah, questions. There's a lot more to it than that, but. About this sure. chart. Yeah. First one, well, one's more of a comment, um, a critique maybe, or something that I appreciate. Oh, Fibre Island was a five, somebody said, okay. Sorry. I appreciate that they've planned for the future because I see 2040 and 2060 on there. Very nice. <laughs> What would, if if Chernobyl and Fukushima were a seven, what would an eight look like? I guess, how can you make the, the reaction, the situation worse? Um, I think you'd have a core meltdown that, that, that where the, where the material sinks down into um, water level aquifer bedrock and you get yep. steam explosions as this, as, as sort of the, the, what they call corium. Is, is the technical term for when you when you take the reactor and you heat it to the point where all the all the nuclear fuel melts and and puddles down into a to, to a puddle that puddle then um, works its way to hit the aquifer and now you have a steam explosion now you have something equivalent to sort of like a a, a, a volcano right you've got a really hot dense material hitting water and you get steam explosions that, that, death that geyser. hydrogen explosions, explosions and, new, and, new and, and yeah death that geyser. that would be devastating death geyser <laughs> so so one thing they didn't do in, in chernobyl now i have to say we we were we were knocking on the soviet union for for its its, its incompetence in its design in in its in its in its pushing people to do things and the lack of backing off when things were were, were not were operating out of sight on the other hand, you know, the, they, they did some of the heroic things to try after the incident to try to minimize the amount of oh, yeah. damage. Um, one of the things of that they did, on that, Dad. They, they had people who basically volunteered to spend 90 seconds to go up on the roof of mm -hmm. that. Remember that, that, that pile, that slag of stuff right there and, 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 and pick up chunks of the, of the graphite moderator, highly radioactive stuff and toss it over the side. And so they would, they would, they would give the person essentially the, the equivalent of sort of a, a lead vest on one side and front and back and give them 90 seconds to go out there, pick up a chunk and toss it over the edge and then run back. And that was their lifetime exposure, right? First off. Um, the other thing that they had was people who volunteered to mine underneath the, the building and build to do what? to lay down concrete um, to, to contain. Because part of the problem in Chernobyl is that that, that reactor puddle, that corium, is, is, is has because it's very high temperature, has the ability to melt its way through. It hasn't gone anywhere. It hasn't gone anywhere. And so what they did was they had people volunteer to, to dig underneath the reactor uh, building and pour a layer of concrete at the bottom. And then I rocked a structure called the sarcophagus around the top, right? The people who, and, and, and even though the sarcophagus and that, that structure is not perfect because it's very hard to contain something afterwards. Um, there are a number of people that, that volunteered to get near lethal dosages to construct something to, to try to keep it from becoming an eight. And, and so there are a number well, of very well, heroic a lot of them people. Did. Well, uh, mo a lot of them did get lethal dosages to say at least people yes. are working on the number of people that got you know uh, but 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 there's a there's a whole and if you go to you go to chernobyl you'll see memorials of people who are are you know are died but other people that are that are that are suffering from the fact that they they took on exposure to to try to lay down so like the army people they would give them they would, they would give them much more effective um suits but they would say you you have one hour to do work underneath the building to help pour this concrete. And that's your lifetime limit. And they said, and even then you have a 25% you know, um, chance of a double, double. To, being, to give you, um, give you an idea, uh, to, to give you an idea, Chesh, um, when you're, when you're working on a reactor, you have dosimetry and they check those symmetry monthly to give, to tell you how, what your, how long you've been exposed to the reactor for your lifetime. Cause you're only allowed a certain amount of lifetime. You're only allowed a certain amount per quarter, per quarter. Um, annually there's 
very specific numbers that go into biological yeah, effects some, and how long uh, you can be. Scuba, if you're like a deep sea drill or deep sea. Um, same principle. Anything like that, same same mm -hmm. rules. Yep. So this is all documented. This is all in your medical records. If I remember mine correctly, I think my lifetime was about 600 and something millirem. Pretty low, actually, if you really think about it. I mean, yeah. So now, that was the, the amount the, that you the, were allowed to have or the amount that you the, matured? Uh, that's how much that I had overall when I got done from my, my total over symmetry. Now, the, 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 when Dapper and I went through uh, nuke school, the type of measurements they use are not some, the same as what they use now. Now they want to use what's known as sieverts and grays and Rankton's. Yes. We had what was millirems and, and what's called Rankton yep, equivalent men, which is RAM. Yeah. Presumably now, there is some, there's more accurate now? Well, one of them tells you biological mm -hmm. damage, right? Oh. REM tells you your biological damage because what happens is this. Okay, in a nutshell, when you have ionizing radiation hit your body, mm -hmm. right? Let's say you have like an alpha particle hit your body. That's going to go through your cells and your cells are going to cause ionization of your water molecules and it's going to disassociate and it's going to form what's called hydronium and hydroxyl. These are ions. These are not conducive to having a cell structure and they cause the cell to die. So when you have ionizing radiation, it causes cellular damage. It also causes DNA damage. Certain amount of radiations are worse. Like a neutron, it's 20 times the worst because one, it's heavier and it has more ionization potential. Or sorry, it's, it's a neutron is, is heavier, so it causes more structural damage for like a DNA than to say like a, a, a low energy gamma ray. So there's a certain amount of biological damage. The type of radiation. It, it not just how okay, radiation, yeah. but the type of radiation will turn how bad it is for you. Yeah, an alpha particle is a charge too, right? It has a, it's stripped of two electrons. So it's it's going to be highly ionized and it's very heavy, very slow moving. So it's going to spend more time next to these water molecules causing biological damage. But the 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 amount of radiation that these people were exposed to, um, it's very similar. It's called Rankton's. Um, 500 Rankton's is considered to be a pretty significant, almost lethal dose. Now, in, in the way I had to memorize it was 500 millirem, or excuse me, 500 rem would give you a 50% chance of death. 100,000 100, rem, you're, you have 100%. And there's, it was kind of a factor between those. It was a very simple way of, yeah. of saying how much yeah. chance do you have to die. Well, 500 rem, you have 50%. 1,000 rem, you have 100% a, a death. You're going you're gonna to die. What happens is your water starts disassociating, your intestines fall apart. When your body cells just basically liquefy inside of you, All you're right. you're going to die, right? Yeah. So um, this was what this was this was on contact twenty thousand Rankton. This is how much radiation on contact. This was way more than any lethal dose. So these people were exposed to anywhere between five hundred and a thousand Rankton just by doing what they were doing. Most of them did die later on. The ones that didn't yeah. had a very significant higher factor and for cancer so, so, um, and things of that nature. So I don't want to diminish the fact that some people did heroic things. They they knew that they were going to die or that they would they would likely develop developing cancers in their lifetime, but they chose to 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 for service other people to try to contain this this problem. Do now, you think a lot of them understood on the other side of the coin? The Soviet Union. Show? What? I'm sorry. Do you think? Do you think? Um, do you think all of them actually even understood how much radiation? There's a number of number of them that, that did. I've, I've talked to. I, I've I talked think. To I think a lot of them did too. Yeah. I talked to a gentleman who was was part of an army corps that that went down and, and poured concrete, and he was down there for for an hour, um, and and he had a he had a slip up where he got basically one point one times the amount of dose. He volunteered to go to the second cycle, and they said, "No, you can't go. Right, you're 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 done. You've yeah. you've." Now that being said, um. On the other hand, what the Soviets did not do was tell the world there was a problem, right? right. Um, the first time we knew there was a problem was there was a, there was a group in in Switzerland, Germany, Switzerland. Then they were measuring radiation in rain, right? And they were able to do very very sensitive sensors because in in rain you have fallout from nuclear tests many years ago that they could detect, yeah. and so they wanted to calibrate in a rainstorm. So they started doing this stuff and they saw this crazy amount of material. Giant spike. That their, their tests were just being going bonkers, right? It's like, this makes no sense. And in fact, they looked at the isotopes that, 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 that was claiming that this very sensitive material equipment was doing. And it's and it was showing this is this is these are radioactive isotopes that are only present in like a reactor core. And so they thought something screwy. There was a there was a reactor um, group, I believe since Sweden. And they have, Sweden has also a really fine nuclear program. And their reactor went into emergency shutdown because the sensors alarms were detecting unusual amounts of radiation. 
And what they determined was the radiation was not coming from inside the reactor, it was coming from outside. And, and basically the weather patterns were starting to spray this, this Chernobyl stuff around. And that's when finally people said, called up, and I believe also the, the president called up on a hotline to, to, to um, believe Gorbachev and said, what's going on here? And yeah, then I imagine by that like time they had satellites. Spike. Would, it would be a really like, what is going on? What is happening? We need to get some important yeah. people on the phone yeah. because and, and, what and, the and hell? And given the truth, they were trying to like, they had satellites, they saw the, the incident going on, um, the gamma's coming from from the general area. And and they saw and they, they saw point, the radio, the cloud. They they knew something had happened. And this was obviously something. The rest exactly of the world caught the world them because the Soviets were hoping the world, right. that they would just pour right. a bunch of sand on this. And and pour a bunch of comic blocks and got to cover it up and say no 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 yeah. oh know. it's a it's a smoke we're going to cover it up with with, with the cement and the smoke will go away and nobody will notice um, there was so yeah. much react so much um, uh, rea uh, radiation released I mean obviously it was one of the greatest amount of radiation released in any single uh, reactor history much in fact I think it was still more, there's much was more, more radiation than, than, than a nuclear bomb. bomb. And it was more than Fukushima too, if I'm not mistaken, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, far, and, far more. I think it was more than Fukushima. Yeah. Are the people who volunteered bravely and ended up dying down the line due to this, or developing issues that ended up killing them due to this, are they counted in the death toll numbers? Because I'm looking at yes. those numbers, and yes. those numbers are still really low. <laughs> yeah. So what, let's look numbers. at this graph. We're talking about. Um, so so here's the thing to understand is that. Energy production has risks and it kills people, right? Mm -hmm. And so this chart talks about when you generate a terawatt of power, how, on, how many people will typically die by producing a terawatt of power? Over an, and, and for each hour and, that and you so generate is, that terawatt. When you, when you burn brown coal, the dirty coal, you typically get 32.7 people for terawatt of power. Um, well, it's per, coal per, per terawatt hour. Four. What? Per terawatt, it's per terawatt, terawatt hour. hour. Yeah, terawatt hours, yes. Um, and, and so coal is at 24. I'm sorry, I should have said terawatt hour. Apologize. Um, yeah. Coal is at 24. Oil is at 18. Units, right? <laughs> biomass is 4. Gas is 2.2. And nuclear is 0 0.007. So when you compare dirty coal to to nuclear, dirty coal kills over 467 times the number of people per terawatt hour. Yeah. So even though these incidents are bad, understand that even clean coal, right? That 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 if you say so-called clean coal, um, that 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 folks try to talk about, um, is is still is still quite quite lethal. I mean, clean coal is approximately 350 times more lethal than nuclear. I'm kind of, what what constitutes biomass as an energy source or for energy production? Like uh, burning well, I, trees, burning. I, I literally, I, I got to tell you, I like literally that. worked at a biomass steam plant after I got the Navy and we burned palm trees. Oh, okay. Yeah, literally. Now, or, trees. Also, there's also biomass can produce methane, biomass can produce other materials, but, but essentially it's, 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 burning oxidizing stuff or rotting stuff oh okay that makes yeah. sense yeah. now yeah. gas there is is a biomass just sounded gas. very vague to me so it was yeah this well this was a, it was it was it was palm trees that would be mixed with other things and then it would be basically i i, I, I didn't say we're fermented but it was basically set let sit around to it actually became um uh it rots it and produces methane it rots Methane and, gas, and, and, and the methane so is then, then combusted. That that, right. that that would put that was put in what's a, a sludge that was like a, almost like a like a coal type thing, and so this weird bizarre mixture. It sounds uh, like it's like fun. it's like composting on a mega scale, right? Yeah. Um, it, it so gas it here is, is natural gas. Exactly. Liquefied natural gas and other natural gas stuff. So that's what you mean by gas, not not petrol, but but gas thing and nuclear. So in terms of of, of safety record, right? You saw the dots. Dots are bad. Mm -hmm. But those are the dots that, that that are that are there. If you compare that to the number of people that die in coal mining, coal lung disease, as well as the nuclear, you talk about the amount of nuclear um, material that gets produced by 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 coal plants. Coal plants are are, are really dirty because of the of the radioactive carbon that 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 they emit and produce as well. 
So, so putting things in perspective, um, nuclear still is several orders of magnitude um, less lethal than other forms of energy production. Yeah, it's um, by far so, the safest so, form of energy so, production. So, so Cheshire, just so you kind of aware, you remember how you talked about middle management? Yeah. I, I don't I don't know how to pronounce the guy's name in Russian. Uh, maybe Landon can. Uh, De- Delotov was his name. Some of that but nice, yeah. he was, exp- yeah. So so the guy that was a supervising this particular experiment, uh, he was exposed to almost 400 rem, uh, 390 uh, rem, uh, which is about 3.9 sieverts, uh, which is, again, about 39% chance of dying. Uh, he did not die. He did not die. Uh, he did actually go to trial in order to uh, get some kind of justice. He was, uh, from what I understand, he granted amnesty much later on, but he he was found accountable for a complete gross negligence for not understanding what was going on in the reactor during this experiment. So, um, you know, this middle management, he did go to prison over it. Uh, I think it was, I think it was like ten years or something before he granted amnesty. But he was he was he get a pretty significant amount of radiation, um, but. Uh, that death, I don't think, was attributed to these death rates. I don't think, I don't think, he, I don't think that later on death was attributed, if I'm not mistaken. But that's that's what happened to the middle management guy. If you're if you're wondering, the guy that yeah. was in charge of this particular uh, experiment that said, okay, let's pull the truck control rods out more. Um, mm. Not a good idea. Yeah, Fair. I did see some concern in the chat where people were asking about um, the waste that comes from it from a plant like this so even when it's not um you know exploding (laughs) when there isn't isn't a major issue that the waste from an energy plant a reactor like this is more problematic than some other other form of um Hmm. energy now is that actually true is that the case is because i i don't know I, I had been thrown out to Rhode Island one time to go apply for a job to a company called Molten Metal Technology. A lot of people don't even know about this shit. Um, but I was I was flown out to Rhode Island. I had a job interview with a company called Molten Metal Technologies. And what they did was called glass vitrification, where they would encapsulate radiological uh, materials in glass, right? Because glass is a pretty good shielder for radiation. There's three things that affect radiation exposure. There's time, distance, and shielding, right? So the further you are away from something, the, the less exposure you have, whether it's going to be what's called a point source, which is a like a dot or a line source, like a pipe or a plane source. Each one has different, literally different mathematics involved to determine how much your exposure is. Uh, Dapper and I both had control point engineering. Um, so we had a big control point watch. We had to do this math in mm-hmm. real time to determine what, what somebody's exposure was. So there's very complicated maths. But um, time distance shielding. So what they do is they encapsulate with glass and then they would put that into more of a lead shielding. And then they basically bury them so these radiological control uh, radiological waste dumpster things you see remember those big cans that have like the radiation sign those are actually mostly low level radiation such as like hazmat suits tools that were oh, used. Yeah. because when you use it when you use a tool in a reactor in the primary right it's automatically assumed that it's been contaminated there's a very very staunch procedure to release that tool as uncontaminated and most time it's not worth it because it has to be surveyed multiple different times over a period of time we're just like you know what don't worry about it it's 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 red we're just going to wrap it with tape use it when we need to but then we're going to destroy it and what they do is they encapsulate it and they put in cement and then they put they put those things in those radiological those big barrels that you see so that's kind of how they do it but unfortunately is those barrels do occasionally um get corroded they do have sometimes substances in them that yeah. may leak um, and that's the, that's the problem when you're disposing of uh, radiological materials is the, is, is the, these things don't last forever. They do, they do, so, you know, rust. Actually, so one, one thing thing I that's to particular say- for, for reactor waste is that, that, and that, that initially the reactor, the, the material that comes out of the reactor, right? If you got a spent fuel rod, um, you need that, that becomes, it's highly radioactive and it decays, mm-hmm. you know, exponentially, right? And, and, and one of the things you've got to be able to do with that reactor thing is, 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 as you say, shield it, give it time for decay before you try to try to process it and turn it into, to glass. Um, Fukushima is primarily was not the, the problem with the Fukushima was primarily that they had a, they had a, um, the, the fuel rods that they take out of the reactor, it was taken a pool of water. And the water would basically keep the 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 it would absorb the heat 
uh, as as the as the material would decay rate of decay and they basically let the thing cool down to the point where they could then take the rods and, and process them as nuclear waste and and when the earthquake and tsunami hit um they were in the process of of actually refueling one of the reactors so they had the, the reactor lid off they were going inside pulling old spent fuel rods putting into the, the to, to the to the um, the pool and taking new rods and putting in there, and 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 so um, their their problem that occurred was that that reactor pool ha had just been filled with a bunch of fairly hot, recently in the core rods that need to be cooled, and the tsunami came in and took out their diesel generators, and took out their and and they had a, they had like six hours of battery. Um, that did survive to try to pump water in to keep water in the pool to keep the stuff from 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 melting and a couple of incidents the water boiled down low enough that it started that that, that started boiling out into the out into the air and so they ended up taking seawater which is a bad thing to add to stuff and basically just pumping seawater in the emergency generators right because what they had, what they had figured was they had six hours of battery life that they could use to keep the pumps pumping the water into the pool to keep the pool cool. Um, and that if they lost all, they had a bunch of backup generators and lost, um, started losing generators, they could just go into town and get more generators. Well, they just suffered a 9.0 magnitude earthquake and the roads were gone and the tsunami went through with this 40 meter wall of water and wiped out roads and so forth. So they weren't going anywhere and there wasn't any place to go to anyway to get this, this, this stuff in. And they had this 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 problem of of they had just taken hot reactor rods out of the reactor and put it in the pool to cool down. Wrong and place, so wrong time, them, with everything yeah, that, possibly that was, going wrong. That 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 was a natural event because again, keeping spent control rods in a pool one for two reasons: one, it keeps it cool; two, it shields it. That is actually pretty normative. Um, this has been a standard practice, but you don't you, yeah. you just the fact that they built it on a fault. And you have that massive tsunami come by, and now, and now you have seawater hitting those control rods and be exposed to air. That's that's why it was so bad. But if that's the rods, rod fuel forth. pulls, it, right? If the rods, rods weren't rods there, is pretty would that been, if the rods yeah, if they hadn't it, had it, just done that, would it have more yeah. likely been fine? It would have not have had, had a, a hot, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because all that water is going back to sea now. You have you have literally radioactive products being going out to a the sea. series of unfortunate events which was tracked yeah. and track they literally can see it coming out of fukushima it's still it's measurable amount now again it's not it's, the thing with they got people to remember is this fukushima did release a snap, substantial amount of, of radiation but the ocean is a very big place it really was substantially deleted, but material. still measurable yeah oh yeah there's always background matter. i mean in fact a fun fact you if you every time you sleep next to somebody you're being exposed to, I think it's 0 0.05 sieverts, which is still insignificant, but it is a measurable amount. It's a small amount of sieverts. You eat, you eat, you eat bananas? Lady, a banana is you one sievert, yeah. uh, one, one microsievert, I'm sorry. So it's, The it's, chat it's, has you know, been discussing microsievert how many bananas one, Steve's exposure was. It's one microsievert, <laughs> for, I believe, for a banana, which again, isn't a lot, right? Is this a lot, but it is something that is measurable. Now, it's fact, a yeah, lot you of bananas. Measure, you, you could technically yeah. measure your uh, radiation exposure in banana equivalent units. Like yes. that's technically it makes for a yes. A lot of bananas. Every time, does, every time you have sex, actually, you're hey, hey, hang on, hang on, Dabber. Every time you have sex, you're irradiated. Just, just think about that. Next time you have sex, people, good. you're gonna be irradiated. But then every time you have your partners are irradiated too, so it's mutual. Um, I, I'm also irradiated yes, right. every time yeah, I go get, outside get back, or take exactly. a flight or. <laughs> you know yeah go yeah. near some and other you know that these are also irradiation events yeah. uranium and thorium are very common metals on earth and 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 the ocean is full of them right so in some sense um you know the ocean is is radioactive it's just that that you can see some concentration of specific isotopes that came from there that have decayed quite quite a bit now well, also, um that, that's one of the reasons why coal you you also have more exposure by living next to a coal factory than you do a nuclear facility a nuclear reactor there's actually that's more exposure oh yeah because by a lot carbon 14 uranium huge thorium but yeah just because dapper's here times the amount. 
Just because Dapper's here and it's special, Steve, do you have a citation for that? Yeah. <laughs> Yay! Yeah, I, I, Yay, I, I do. It's my you citation like it? needed. <laughs> animation. Yes. Yeah. Yes. What's okay. your yeah, citation? Sure. He'll put it in the uh, show notes. Yep. <laughs> While he's doing that. Uh, um. So 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 um, I, I, I hope this is it. giving you some people some notion of, of kind of complexities of a reactor control. Um, the fact that modern safety reactors are, are are built in a way that essentially you have to work to keep them going, and if you and if you're unable to attend to them or unable to get them going, they'll they'll coast down rather than amplify up. Right? Those are the designs. This is the the negative reactor coefficient means that you have to work to keep the reaction going. And if you don't do the work, reaction stops, as opposed to the other way around. And that's what the the the, the said was. So so we had a, a we had a poor design. We had an experiment that was ironically ironically a safety experiment that was poorly executed, had middle management pressure, and and set them up for failure and failed spectacularly. Right, um, and you know and, and so yes, you could talk about things, but but I think. The, the, the criminal negligence is the fact that, that Russia still operates these reactors with, quote, safety enhancements, right? Well, since I then, there hasn't I, been another RMBK, like, nuclear incident, as far as I know, has there? So, so I know. Chester, I just gave you a link. I just gave so you a link. There is that, at least. Um, it could be a lot so, worse. So you here, sent it to me on so Hangouts, didn't you? Yes, ma'am. You, we want, would you like it on Twitter? It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> So, so someone has to do ninety five percent of the work. <laughs> so, so here, so here we have. So, sleeping next to someone is point is zero five microsievert. Uh, living within thirty miles of a nuclear power plant, zero nine microsieverts. One microsievert eating a banana. Three microsievert living within fifty miles of a coal plant for a year, and then ten microsieverts. The average dose received by national background. So it's three microsieverts for coal. Why only? Uh, 0. or 0. 0.09 microsieverts for living uh, living within 30 miles of a nuclear power plant. So coal is substantially yeah. more radioactive than a reactor. There you go. There's yeah. your dose. I mean, there's your citation. Yes, I I, I read this stuff. Uh, Latimo, 99. Uh, banana! Banana! <laughs> I like bananas. I think there was also a super chat from Manya, if you want to grab that. Sure. Uh, I got to scroll back here. Manya oh, says... Good Thank you, Manya. Uh, Manya says, I think if one is exposed to level 8 radiation, then your chromosomes get obliterated and you walk like a ghost. We, or, you know, you get referred to as a walking ghost. Yeah, well, again, uh, level a level 8 obviously is, is uh, you know, going to have more than just one person going to be exposed to a massive amount of radiation. Yeah. What happens with your chromosomes is this. Okay, there's something called a primitive dimer where you have on your nucleotides, you know how you have your nucleotides that go across for your phosphate backbone? Instead of going across like this, they'll bend down like this, and so they'll connect like this. It's called a dimer or a lesion. And those primitive dimers are cancerous. They're, they're considered to be carcinogenic. So when you're exposed to ultraviolet radiation uh, or you're exposed to any type of radiation that could cause a just breakage of those nucleotides in the DNA strand and cause those dimers, that's why it's carcinogenic. These, these are cancerous yeah. lesions on the primitive yeah. dimers. So this is what happens when your body gets exposed to, to radiation. It destroys that DNA. It obliterates, as you said, it obliterates yeah. it, Manya. Yeah. Um, most, most, and someone asked, how reactive is my Nintendo? Um, not very reactive. Most electronics that go through a great deal of effort to try to minimize the amount of radioactivity that is in the set. So, so for example, when you have you know, things like silicon, um, carbon, other things they try to produce it by sources that are fairly pure because it's those it's those natural contaminants that can cause bits to flip inside inside memory can cause transistors to malfunction and so forth so so it typically a computer a cell phone is designed to be much less radioactive than your typical blob of stuff you could pick off of the ground yep all right guys uh we are going for two and a half hours so i think it's about time we wrap it up um, do you guys would like maybe next month? Um, cause I know I convinced Lana to come back cause I got, I got pull of them, um, to mm. maybe have a hangout on the specificities of more radiological, uh, control, radiological, um, uh, yeah. effects of the body, um, ionizing radiation, 
and, and understand so what a back to, rail is, meta, uh, a sea yeah, vert. And we, could, we talk about some of this stuff. I mean, I can, I can give a presentation about, you know, effects of, of fallout of nuclear, nuclear explosions, for example, some of that stuff uh, is there. Yeah. But I also want to mention there, there is a, a if you're going to go and do, do sort of an after party where you can do some more detailed questions. Um, there has been, you may know, um, a, an eruption in Tonga, Honga Tonga. And I'm willing to um, uh, talk about that, has some data there. Um, but also there are people in Tonga that are in real dire need right now and can use your assistance. And so there are three known charities that we will be promoting in this after show. So if you're willing to go and listen about that eruption and give you some data, what happened, so forth, you could also ask questions about the nuclear stuff you want to as well um, for the for a good cause of trying to raise um, uh, funds for the people in Tonga who are in desperate need of, of people, you know, running the risk of the, the, besides their injuries of so forth, they have, uh, you know, needs for, for water and food. They have none. Right. So so. Um, um, if you could, if you could uh, join us for that little um, Discord, it's it's in the non sequitur Discord. Is that right? Uh, I don't think the Discord's quite up yet, so it'll probably be with Steve and the GDC over there. Yeah, I'm. I'm oh, GDC was right. And then uh, I'm probably going to do the GDC. Um, I'm I'm pro I'm going to go eat first, probably. Give him a half an hour. Um, yeah. I sound good. Oh, I, I can set up right now. If you got, uh, let me set, let me set up and get you guys As over well, there. If you guys want to start it, I think it would actually. Be yeah, if you can, if you start getting it set up, then we could go there. And you could join us and so forth, and and we'll we'll shill as well as as I don't I don't know what Dapper's thinking. We can ask and some ask some questions, answer some questions you might have, um, in regards to uh, what we just talked about, and then um, we can and then when a when season. And then we can I, I can do the, the the stuff for the for the Hunga Tonga um, eruption. I think it would also be interesting if Landon's coming back on to talk about um, radiation fallout, the effects on the body, but as well as like disposal of like a little bit more in depth yeah. about like the disposal yeah. Of, yeah. of rods and like the the fallout and what what works what doesn't what it what is good in coal or what is bad in coal like kind of like myths and like they here's what people think sure. is the case or here's what media presents is the case here's what's actually the case yeah and so we could do it later on you know a, a show that's like a different obviously show. Is, obviously we have other excellent non sequitur shows coming up that help you you know plug but at some point we can talk about essentially um radiation yeah, just we got as, some as stuff coming up. Yeah. Um, and and by the way, we'll leave it with this. So so just let you guys let you know, people. When I told them I want to go for this job interview, uh, nobody asked me if I got the job or not. Um, you want to know what happened? Uh, I did not get the job, and then a month later, that company went out of business. So I'm so glad that I didn't move to Rhode Island to start a company that uh, would have hired me and gone out of business about 30 days later. So wow. <laughs> so that was fortuitous. Yeah, but they, hey, it was all expensive. They flew me out to Rhode Island, and I, I, I interviewed really well. And I was wondering why I didn't get the job because I was like, hey, I, I mean, I remember even hey, Dopper. One of the questions they asked me was, what was make a feet blow? Citation needed. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that, they asked me about muff. I swear to God, I went to a job interview, and I got asked what muff was. Not bullshitting. Where do you want to go from there? I'm done. <laughs> all right, goodbye, everybody. We'll see you in the after show Bye. on the GDC. Mom. Yeah, so go go to the, G G G G the GDC after show, uh, Hunga Tonga, and um, the opportunity to help out some people and learn about the volcano.